You're listening to the Deep Purple Podcast, a fan podcast about one of the most legendary bands of all time, Deep Purple. We take a look at the music, history, and people behind the band Deep Purple and beyond. Welcome to the Deep Purple Podcast, the first and only podcast devoted to one of the greatest bands in rock history, Deep Purple. Today's episode is episode number 53, the one-year anniversary extravaganza. And coming to you from the microbrew suburbs of Chicago, I'm your host, Nathan Beaudry. And coming to you from the suburbs of Providence, your co-host, John Schiaff Matola. <laughs> Is that like some, that's some sort of Italian uh, expression of dismay or disdain? No, schiaf means slap. Slap? Okay, so what is yeah, that? You, um, well, you use it like if you just like... Um, like you know, a schiaf. Yeah, you're pissing off one of your Italian relatives and they're like, hey, you knock it off or I give you a schiaf. <laughs> <laughs> so why are, why are you schiaf? Are you... Because that's what I like to do to a lot of people lately. <laughs> <laughs> Give a ski off. Give a ski off for oh. for not social distancing, not wearing a mask. What, what, oh, coming, going so to the many. grocery store in groups of twenty. What what is it today uh, that's bothering you? So many things. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not going to get Can't political just about one. it. I'm not going to get political about it. But the way that everybody's now turning everything political is really bothering me. It's uh, uh, okay. That's so. But I I never I'm not a person that likes to to argue or um, any of that stuff. So I keep it to myself. So right. let's just say, be smart and be safe. There you go. Well, fair enough. All right. Well, if you want to donate and help this show, we're at our one year mark, folks. We've made it this far. Thank you so much yeah. for all of our fantastic uh, listeners and supporters and patrons. Uh, if you want to continue to help this uh, podcast trek on into 2020 and beyond, uh, please consider giving us a some support on Patreon. You can become a patron for as little as $1 a month. And you can also support the show by giving us a review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, that helps new people discover the show, I'm told. Five stars or more would be great. Leave us a little review about what you like about the show. Um, thank you. Speaking of our, our patrons, uh, we got to thank them. And whoa! Whoa! Coming in at the newly minted Turn It Up to $11 tier, Ryan M. Bring it up. He just he just sent a, I think he sent a screenshot too. He was like, boink. He, it was of him just like going in and manually setting it to $11 instead of 10. So I created an $11 tier if you want to join, Ryan. Um, I think it should become a bidding war at this point to see who can be in the top slot. Who can outdo Ryan, folks? I'm sure there's somebody out there. You know, maybe I should make a 15 or 25 or $400 a month tier or whatever it is. Um, <laughs> join. Um, at the $10 Super Champion tier, we've got, of course, Steve Seaborg of NameOnAnything.com and AllTheWordsStage.net. And we are closer than ever to actually getting T-shirts or hats or something made uh, thanks to what you should be seeing now, which is the wonderful, amazing new Deep Purple logo. Um, which we're super, super thrilled about is made by Brendan Ashbrook. Uh, with basically with no, um, we didn't ask him to. He just all of a sudden one day, he made a really awesome, uh, he did the socially distanced uh, Come Taste the Band album with all the glasses separated. Yeah, and which is awesome. funny because I had done one for Burn and then you and I had talked and we both had the exact same idea of, oh, let's mm -hmm. do one for Come Taste the Band where all the glasses, they're each in their own individual glass. And you had the idea and you told me and I was like, I was going to do that. And then I looked on Twitter and he had already done it. <laughs> I was like, wow, I guess it was a common idea, uh, but it came out great. And then mm -hmm. I was like, I, I said something like nasty about it. Like, ah, oh, I was going to do this. And then he's like, oh, sorry about that. And then he just sent over this amazing Deep Purple podcast logo. I was like, oh, wow. So I was like, great, we're going to use that now. <laughs> and Which he made, in the, uh, it's in the style of uh, Made in Europe, right? That's right, correct. It's, yeah, it's, kind it's of really a, cool looking. The Made in Europe colors, he made like kind of a, like a metallic, like brushed aluminum background sort of looking for it. It looks really pro which is good because yeah. our old logo didn't because I just threw it together in like 20 <laughs> minutes and we've just used it for an entire year and now we're going to have something that looks really good. 
And it's one of my, one of my favorite logos of theirs too, from the, from the early days. Like I just really always loved that, that cover and that logo. So that was kind of really cool that he did it. Yeah, it came out great. So I'm super happy about that. Uh, the $5 tier, we got Clay Wambacher, Greg Sealby, Frank Tealgard Mortensen, and Mike Knowles. At the $3 tier, Peter Gardeau, Ian Derosier, Mark Roback, and Anton Glaving. At the $1 made-up name tier, Els Murders, Spacey Noodles, the ghoulish and ghastly Leaky Mausoleum, and... <laughs> <laughs> I missed the button. I misfired. Oh, Michael what? Vader, a new patron. Michael Vader, the force one is strong in with this the, one. One year in, and the production values are. I know the <laughs> the sound machine. The, 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 the our patented sound machine really let me down on this one. Uh, oh. There we go. Uh, but thank you to all of you for all of your your support of the show. We really appreciate it. We couldn't do it without you. Um, everyone seems to be digging Patreon, but we do have um paypal available if anyone's interested in uh just doing a one-time or recurring donation through paypal you can get listed in this hall of heroes this this uh this catalog of champions whatever you want to call it uh we would would love to have you join us um so of course our brothers of the deep dive podcast network riot sabbath bloody podcast the simple man is skinnered reconsidered and terry t-bone mathley of t-bones prime cuts and a big thanks to the patron saint and archivist of the Deep Purple podcast for one year has been uh, giving us huge amounts of knowledge and information about everything Deep Purple related. And that is Mr. Jorg Planer. We thank you for your support. So I, since it's, the, uh, it's our one year anniversary, I figured I'd celebrate with a, with a nice beverage. Speaking of microbrews, we've got a great brewery here. Oh, ASMR. Oh, I don't know if you can hear that. Noise gate might cut it up. We've uh, got this great. Nope. Did you hear it? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I heard uh, the. So Pipeworks, this is a great uh, local brewery, has this quad, which is a Belgian style quadruple style ale. And the reason I, I selected that is because it's traditionally served in a goblet. Speaking nice. of come taste the band. Can you see a, can you see a little David Coverdale head floating in there? It's probably just a I reflection can, of can, your head, actually. I can actually. picture it. <laughs> I can it picture is. It. it you, is. Can, you can actually hey. see a, ref, a reflection of your head in the uh, glass. <laughs> yeah. In the screen. So let's let's give this a taste. Oh yeah, that's good. Notes of of uh, of dried cherry and plum. Fantastic. And little known fact, Pipeworks, the name of one of my favorite films. <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> it took what is you. It? It took you a couple of seconds. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh boy. Hey-o. Hey-o. All right. Anyways, um, <laughs> wah, wah, bad jokes. All right. No, anyways. <laughs> um, yeah. Speaking, speaking of which, all right, that one, that one fell kind of flat. <laughs> I forgot you had your, sound. you haven't brought out your soundboard in like since Christmas. Oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing it out for, uh, bringing it out for the one year anniversary special. So we have, um, let me look at my notes here. Yeah, we've got two new podcast reviews on iTunes or on uh, Apple Podcasts, I'm living <laughs> in the past here. Uh, the first comes to us from Lionel Hutz. This was on April 10th. I love it. Five stars, title, Unbelievably Researched Deep Dives. He says, on some timeless classic albums and some pretty terrible ones it's been great to hear the backstories on some of my all-time favorites like machine head and burn but even better hearing seven plus hours of in-depth analysis of a talking animal concept album is what has kept me sane through the quarantine oh that's awesome thank you lionel if that's your real name which it probably isn't um and then we have one from double eagle and interesting double is spelled like the german uh german the belgian double which would be a, a sister beer to the quadruple the double there's the double the triple and the quadruple um and the five stars again the title is first listen and it says i saw this show when it first aired uh, oh oh so he must be talking about um uh, the california jam episode so mm. i saw oh, yeah. this show when it first aired 14 years old i was Huge impact on my rock and roll sensibilities. Great to hear your thoughts. So that's really cool. 
Um, I was like, you were 14 years old when, when this first aired? What's going on? Okay. Um, and then just another thing I just wanted to plug, uh, maybe I can see in here, um, but this is the, um, this came to my attention very recently and in talking with some, in some Tommy Bolin circles here. And that is uh, this GoFundMe for a Tommy Bolin memorial statue. So there's the GoFundMe page for it. I'll put a link mm -hmm. in the show notes. Um, they've, don't, they've raised almost $3,000 out of $22,000. Wow. We'll be putting in some of our Patreon money as well to support this great concept. Greg Scott is somebody who's been kind of communicating with me back and forth on Facebook for a while. And uh, they've got this great design for a statue, which uh, is it on here? Let's see. I don't see the picture on here. He posted a picture on Facebook though, which it, it's kind of an iconic Tommy Bolin photo basically that they've made into a statue. If you saw oh, you it, know what? I, I think I saw, was it posted uh, today? Because I think um, I might've, I might've might seen it. Cause it was it today is, or yesterday. It looks, um, if it's the th same one that I'm thinking about, I remember thinking like, that's a really good, um, I mean, I scrolled by it, but I thought it was a good likeness or, or um, you know, image of him. So, because a lot of times, like these, these kind of statues, they, yeah, they don't really look that great. Like the, I, I remember hearing about the memorial statue of Lemmy that they have at the Rainbow in L.A. And when I oh, went yeah. there last year, I was like, oh, I'm gonna get to see it. I'm gonna go to Lemmy's Corner and everything, and and you know, went out there and there it was, and I was like. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's, the statue doesn't really look that awesome. Um, I mean, it was still cool to be there, but it's like, you know, you wanna you wanna do it right. And I don't know if it's maybe a uh, a thing of money or um, so. I mean, I, I feel like twenty. What is it? Twenty two thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that would be sufficient enough to do a, a well crafted statue. So I I hope that we can help them get there. Yeah, it's better than that statue of the. Um... <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, Confederate general and Nathaniel Forrest. Have you ever seen that one? No. <laughs> I'm, I'm pull it up for you. It's, it's this is a real statue. <laughs> it looks like a joke. It does. He looks insane. And of what course, the hell? Yeah, uh, yeah. Nathaniel Bedford for or Nathan Bedford Bedford Forrest. Um, yeah. yeah, as a Confederate general and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of one of one of those long standing jokes about like what a horrible uh, statue. Um have you ever heard of the uh the Fonz statue? <laughs> no. I think it was called the Br the Bronze Fonz, I think it was. Look that one up cuz that one's Fonz. another one which is I think it is. <laughs> yeah, I see it. <laughs> and it's like it's not even that big and it's like it's kind of it's one of those like underwhelming. I haven't seen it in a while, but I remember hearing Quite yeah, it kind of looks like it kind of looks like there's a picture of Henry Winkler with it and it actually I see it from one angle it looks actually pretty good but the angle there's a picture of um Henry Winkler standing by it and he looks kind of a statue almost looks like C3PO. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's yeah, so there he is right there. <laughs> yeah, that's a it it looks like yeah, the statue is like really bad like it looks like somebody like like he looks like a freaking corpse. Like somebody like the, poked his eyes. Well, like the eyes, eyes are really, really sunken in. Yeah. It's just, it's not a, Henry Winkler's probably just like, hey, they made this friggin' statue for me. I got to pose with it, I guess. <laughs> the point being is there are a lot of shitty statues out there. So let's make sure that Tommy Bowen oh, yeah. is, is well, not. We want to devote, you know, even just anything towards helping advance the memory of um, Tommy Bowen. And then, yeah. And mm -hmm. the, and the mock-up they had looked great. It looked like mm -hmm. that iconic photo of Tommy yeah. and um, yeah, hoping, hoping that we can get there. And if you guys are out there and wanting to support this, uh, please do uh, so we can have a really great Tommy Bowen, Bowen statue and be there in, uh, uh, in Iowa, I'm assuming they is probably where they'd put it. And uh, I was supposed to go out that way last month before everything went to hell. I uh, mm -hmm. never got to go out there, but I, I would definitely like to stop by and check out some of the stuff they have for Tommy back in, is it Sioux city? Mm -hmm. yeah i think they have like that they have like a a little almost it almost looks like a, a hard rock cafe style sort of situation where you can see like some of his gear and his outfits and stuff like that would be really cool to check out yeah. maybe that's our our next post quarantine road trip exactly the deep purple uh, podcast goes to see Tommy Bolin stuff that'd be great live on the road 
Um, before we uh, carry on, though, of course, we've got uh, a sponsor this week uh, coming at you to support our one-year episode com- really coming through. So let's check it out. They say I'm cushy, I'm big softy, but I'm going to pop you if you don't stop pouncing on me. Don't scratch me, I got feelings. You really make me sore. I'm going to send you flying like you never flown before. From the Barker Brothers. Battery's not included. What's another uh, that? <laughs> I know it's Pop Cats. It's a um Parker Brothers game apparently. Let me look it up. Um and yeah, uh, must have been short lived. He had another one, remember? It was that water like water rescue heroes or something. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember I, I called somebody the wrong name because I was uh I was Wendy Wonder or Wendy Water or something like that. Uh Parker Brothers Pop Cats. It's not coming up. Pop Cats game let's see here no uh, let's see it it's an app pop cats More it's than... not a food <laughs> pop cats an existent an addictive pop cats puzzle game it looks kind of like candy crush maybe that's what they mean hmm. pop cats hmm. check it out check out pop cats it's a great game all right <clears throat> moving on so this episode you know we're going to talk uh kind of a rehash of the year but we're going to thank some of our we've got some great testimonials written by some of our listeners and we're going to go into what our top episodes are some of our top rankings kind of where where things stand some of our our favorite songs and moments from the year so um there shouldn't be a ton of new information on this episode but it'd be fun to kind of rehash and our first testimonial comes to us from murray bulger on uh twitter murray is most active it says Hi guys, just wanted to say, listening and interacting on social media, talking Deep Purple has been awesome. I grew up on Purple, Sabbath, Zeppelin, and so many more. When other kids my age were listening to New Kids on the Block, Michael Jackson, Nirvana, Ugly Kid Joe, and what other shit was on the radio, kids would say, have you heard the new song by NKOTB, Step by Step? I say, have you heard Smoke on the Water, Highway Star, and Burn by Deep Purple? Especially Blackmore's playing on live albums. I have to thank my old man for playing me great records when I was a kid. Funny thing, the same kids would be listening to those bands later in life. And especially uh, Step by Step is going to be on the new Deep Purple album. So we're hoping it's an NKOTB cover. We could bring the whole thing, you know, all the way around here. Um, So many great shows talking about music and sharing the Deep Purple story and family tree. Congratulations to Nate and John on one year anniversary. Cheers. Keep up the great work. To all the fans, tell your friends about this great show talking the great Deep Purple. Long live Deep Purple. Regards, Murray Bulger, proud Deep Purple podcast listener. And then a bunch of emojis. Thumbs up. So thank you, Murray. Really appreciate that. And speaking of episodes, yeah, we're going to go through um, our top episodes. So that's going to be the, the next segment here. Top episodes in uh, as far as views go. And coming in at number 10. So this is, this is views... Um, YouTube listens, or listens? This is, or? This is listens on the, the audio podcast. Um, okay. I didn't, uh, because there's no YouTube video that is enough to really sway it one way or the other. Mm, YouTube, yeah. YouTube remains kind of very, very low numbers. Um, okay, so listens on Apple Podcasts? On all podcast okay. uh, platforms together. Okay, so all right. Any, if you're listening to it as an audio podcast, this is counting in. And coming in at number 10, Made in <clears> Japan. <throat> Wow, which is an episode we considered not even doing, because we were sure we weren't sure. Ah, do we do a live album? We just we just did Machine Head. Do we rehash mm-hmm. all these songs again? But well, doing the doing the live versions was obviously a a good idea, and it was it was fun to hear all the songs again. Um, mm-hmm. on, on you know those versions of the songs, because I mean I haven't really pulled that album and listened to it in a in a while, so yeah i'm not like i'm not usually a huge live album guy there's a few like monumental live albums that i really got into when i started getting into music like uh like tribute and stuff like that but mm-hmm. uh live evil speak of the devil um uh, i don't know if i could think of any that are not ozzy related or, yeah. or, uh, or black <laughs> 80s, sabbath yeah. related um but yeah but yeah generally i'm not gonna like sit down and put on a live album as a rule but um mm. it was a fun episode to do yeah yeah, it was. I, I enjoyed it. Coming in at number nine, uh, Deep Purple, Before They Were Purple, Part One, our second episode, episode number wow. two. 
we hadn't quite gotten there with the album art yet. <laughs> <laughs> Got more of a formula now. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was where we just talked about the backgrounds be- be- behind the five original members of Deep Purple and played some clips of all of their, uh, this would have been the first, I think, episode where we ever played audio clips. Uh, and we talked about, we just kind of listened to some of the early stuff by Maze and Blackmore's early stuff with the Outlaws and stuff like that and talked about their backgrounds. So it was a fun episode. Was, um, and this was the very first one? This is, this is the second one. The second oh, this episode. Oh, the second but... episode. Yep. Yeah, God, it seems like so long ago. I know, right? What, how long we've come. In, in uh, eighth place, here we go. Come taste the band. Let's see if we can get John in the, in the goblet again here. <laughs> is that, oh, no, I think you just seen no. my mic. My, uh, my yeah, webcam. I can just see your, yeah. <laughs> it's my webcam. <laughs> um, <laughs> come taste the band. Episode number 20. That Which, was that was a fun episode. That's you know one of the albums I couldn't wait for. Yeah. Oh God, me too. Yeah. Getting into those Mark Three and Mark Four albums was like it, yeah. it, I remember thinking, "Oh, we're never gonna get there," and and now it seems like it was so far in the past. Um, but this one is actually one. Speaking of YouTube, that got really no views on YouTube, and I can't forget the other day it was at like seventeen views, and Michael Erickson actually uh, contacted me like, "Why aren't there more views on this?" I said, "I don't know." That's weird. I, I say, honestly, I never looked, so I don't, I, I don't really look. I throw them up on YouTube and I just kind of, I'll respond if anyone comments, but I don't really look at them. Mm-hmm. Um, so he was like, this is nonsense. So he posted to a bunch of Tommy Bolin groups and it's like probably up over a hundred views by now. And that was, oh, nice. I think yesterday. <laughs> so wow. um, yeah, he wanted to get some more love for that. Um, and of course, as soon as they did that, somebody was like, hey, you got this, these facts wrong. It's like, ah, damn it. <laughs> I we talked we talked about that terrible story in Jakarta about uh, Patsy Collins. Uh, I think mm-hmm. I, I must have mis- misspoke and I said Rob Cooksey was the one that got, fell down the elevator shaft, uh, which was wrong. So, uh, but thank you for listening. Uh, and our number seven spot, Stormbringer. Some some Mark Three love there, Stormbringer mm-hmm. coming in at, in at number seven. That was a fun. I was really looking forward to that episode. Oh yeah, I mean anything Mark Three or Mark Four. I mean we were both chomping at the bit to get to it. So I re- I remember thinking, oh, we're never gonna get out of the Mark. Even though it was only three weeks, I was like, we're never gonna get out of Mark One. <laughs> we're gonna be talking about Mark One forever. But I think we were so like eager back then, like when you first started to like you you put up an episode and you're just. I remember being like, oh my god, I, this episode's not gonna be live for for three days. Like I can't stand it. And now you're just like, oh whatever. Like it goes up and I, I wake up Monday morning and I'm like, oh, that's the episode this week. <laughs> Yeah, it's that's the only way I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm I'm usually surprised because I'm like, oh, I just had I because we film film we record them so far in advance. I I don't even remember. But. I remember on this episode like learning the history behind the album cover, which I hmm. did not know that it was that much. Like, yeah, and then we um, yeah, and and uh, it's they they we where we i was recently watching uh the movie twister and there was a they play a scene from the california jam in it and i posted it on twitter and i was surprised nice. that they're playing this scene from the california jam but it was the wrong song it was oh they were playing stormbringer i think but mm-hmm. they were showing video footage from the california jam he's watching it in the in the van as they're driving around and then there's even like a an homage to that picture which is a you know which is a classic picture of that tornado yeah. And there's an homage to that as like a twister is forming in the background. So I was like, wow, they must be deep purple fans that made this movie. Cause why would they put in all this weird deep purple stuff? Yeah. Um, and the number six slot, Richie Blackmore's rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I love, I love the, um, I love the thumbnail art that you do for these. It's so funny. Yeah. That was a fun one. I don't know if this is yeah. the one I actually ended up using. I couldn't figure out which one I had actually used for the episode, but yeah, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> Richie in between the two of us. You, you um, and Richie standing in front of the castle, guitar castle. Actually, I was like thinking back on this episode and thinking that I may have been like too harsh on the album. Yeah, um, me too. Um, I mean, um, especially, um, actually, I don't remember some of the ratings that I gave to it, but I feel like, you know, if we were to go back, um, I, I can't remember what I rated. Still, I'm sad, but I, I would have definitely bumped it up if it wasn't already like a four or five 
Yeah, I think there's there's a definitely a, a theme of us being too harsh in the moment on a lot of stuff. Although, you know, we try to always be very positive in our reviews. We're not like looking to trash anything generally. But No, but you know, I just think that, you know, I always regarded this this album very highly and then just kind of listening back to it, it's like kind of like, oh, it's really, you know, there are some there are some good parts, there are some flaws, there are some, you know, just different different take on it, you know? Well, I think it was very similar to teaser which we we both love this album we both love teaser but i think the things that we both pointed out were just that in 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 points they seemed both to be a little disjointed Mm -hmm. like they weren't as cohesive as other albums and mostly because they had this you know with rainbow i guess it was a consistent lineup but with tommy ball and there was like this rotating cast coming through and it it it's a great album with great songs on it but it didn't really gel maybe the way that some of the other stuff may have and I don't know. I mean, who knows? I mean, it's like when we were younger and didn't really know so much of the background, you know. Um, I mean, I remember enjoying like both albums. Or since we have Rainbow up, just this album, I remember enjoying it a lot and not knowing anything about the history of it or it was a one-off lineup or they never played live or mm-hmm. Richie fired all of them later. And then when I found that out, did that info kind of uh, color my judgment a little bit? Um, yeah, it's possible. Who knows? Maybe. When we're doing these deep dives, we do learn a lot of stuff. And, you know, Mm -hmm. growing up, you just listened to this and took it for what it was. Um, In the number five spot, Burn, episode number 17. Yeah. There you go. That was another one that was really a lot of fun to do. You can tell by the look on our faces that we're delighted. (laughs) Um, But, but yeah, a a fun episode. What more can you say about the Burn episode? An, An album that suffers only from its rating of A200, I think. Mm -hmm. a song that we both like but it just doesn't it's hard to give that song a uh four or five like we were on some of the other tracks on that album and again um a lot of uh learned a lot about the the album art on this one oh yeah (laughs) that was from my my recollection that wasn't even supposed to be like a finished album cover it was just like oh here's Mm -hmm. a mock-up of what you should do and then the album comes out with the cover like use it yeah well yeah we'll go we'll go with it um in the number four slot machine head episode number 12 of course Not surprised strong correlation between how popular these albums are and um true yeah uh i know and of course that's a uh one of the albums that almost the story doesn't even need to be told because it's all told on the album and it's like folklore of 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 heavy metal and hard rock so but it was a lot of fun to do and i think this is one that's been banned on youtube for whatever reason again another another episode where i learned about stuff about the album cover um i've been i learned actually learned a lot about um the album art on this show that you researched um that i didn't know like this one didn't you say like the the logo and and the name of the album were like actually like minted into like Mm -hmm. a sheet metal or something and it was like that's crazy i think that's one of the big takeaways for me with this al- early album art is that it all it always looks like it's a painting but then you just like oh it's it's almost always a photograph that they made look like a painting which is really puzzling to me like why they didn't just like paint it or something but yeah this one i believe was their actual reflections in an actual piece of metal that had deep purple machine head punched into it and you can even see the cameraman sort of in the background there because he's reflect he's ref- <laughs> oh, yeah. i think our heads are covering it but uh over between yeah between john lord and roger glover you can see the mm-hmm. little tripod and the two hands holding up the camera yeah yeah i don't know funny. if you pointed that out when we did the episode but i just noticed it now i can't remember if i did but yeah it's funny it's they didn't airbrush it out or anything it was like, ah screw it keep it um but very cool stuff then in the number three three slot rainbow rising and this one actually is a painting it's not a photograph of a gigantic hand coming out of the sea (laughs) if it was real i'd be terrified yeah that would be a little yeah you should get a picture of it if it does really happen um but that of course one of our favorite album covers and uh yeah for sure of course there we are catching the rainbows ourselves on the on the cover art you look like you're in pain it's like i'm just like radiating with power i'm like "Ah." i don't know i look at you and you're just like "Ah, that's hot (laughs) (laughs) but yeah oh man i'm I'm glad that this is one of the highest rated episodes because i love this album and it's great it's it's you know it's had a heck of a lot less time to be out there for people to listen to so it shows you how popular this album is uh when it's when it's 
you know, when the next episode, episode number two slot is in rock, which is our eighth episode, eighth episode eight. Yep. Wow. Um, so, you know, rising is, will definitely overtake it soon. Um, so that's our eighth episode. And then in the number one slot is of course the number one episode, episode number one, where we just kind of talk about our backgrounds to deep purple, how we discovered them. And also, um, yeah, just kind of figure out how to do a podcast. So <laughs> <laughs> I w- I'm kind of like, Oh man, I wish that wasn't our most listened to episode because it's probably not our best, but hopefully but people listen to that and carry on the um, probably for the, the amount of time that it's been available is one of the reasons that it's probably rated so highly or exactly. Well, it, or um, people are like, Oh, it's the first episode of, the show i'll start with that one and my, right. my only worry is that they're like oh these guys don't know what they're doing and then they won't <laughs> listen anymore <laughs> but um i've actually hmm. even c- considered like maybe we should redo that one and just post it up in that slot and just have a redone like a rehashed how did we get in a deep purple episode and make it a little bit more uh inviting but oh well it's it, i guess it's roped in enough people all yeah, right move, well. move on to i'm sorry did you Oh, I thought you were nope. going to say something. Moving on to more testimonials. We've got one from our good friend, Peter Gardeau. And he says, Nate and John, like I said in my iTunes review, it is like talking to old friends. Last February, 2019, I started searching for a deep purple podcast due to my listening of the Sabbath bloody podcast and his covering of the Mark three and Mark four, deep purple and rainbow Hughes, Dio, cozy, etc. Nothing. I searched again last May, and lo and behold, the Deep Purple podcast was there. Here I was listening to a couple of old friends in time, not age, that grew up in Rhode Island, home of the American Burying Beetle, (laughs) with their buddy Paul listening and playing music. Besides learning about the extended Deep Purple family that I had no idea about, Sausage Fingers, Nikki, Episode 6, Butterfly Ball, Trapeze, Warhorse, Fandango, etc., The most important facts were what the kids in Rhode Island were really saying in 1991. Butters, I'm on your tip. There are more (laughs) of them for you to share from the Providence Journal. Mm. Coffee Milk, the Rhode Island State Bird, How Your Father's Feet Are Doing, Record Stores Along Route 44, along with those in Woonsocket, Warwick, Sanka, and Caldor. That is important stuff. I am surprised that there has not been a monologue about Sunday dinners at Wright's Farms or trips to Block Island. With all that said, it was awesome to meet Podcast John at the Deep Purple Show at Mohegan Sun last October with my longtime friends, Patreon, Mark, and Don. There he was with his Paul Stanley Puma sneakers. Awesome. I had no idea that those sneakers existed. Search online for a pair. John must be independently wealthy. $250 for size 12. Yikes. There was also the in-depth discussion about music we have in common and not in common. Grand Funk. And of course, that Venmo really was Mark... Uh, in court, uh, and of course, what Venmo really was, Mark and I thought it was a disease way back in August. <laughs> it, it was like John and I knew each other for a long time, too, too. Fun. Now that there's a social distancing and I work from my home office in the basement, I'm getting behind with the Deep Purple podcast. Previously, with the two, two days of commuting back and forth to work, I would complete the drop of the podcast. Now, I work even longer hours at home and the Deep Purple podcast is a catch-up event. With my wife working from home and my daughter home from school, with her overseas roommate staying here, there's not a lot of time to carve out listening time. I hope the ri- I hope to rip teaser and difficult to cure as LPs I purchased last summer to digital format since the turntable is upstairs. Nate was the impetus to get me to my rig up and running again to rip him a copy of the awesome Crazy Horses record. It's a bummer that Coverdale dropped out of the Van White Snake tour this summer. Got a ticket for John at Great Woods on August 22nd. Will only be the Red Rocker and Night Ranger. Ugh. <laughs> Hope that show will go on. Take care. Looking forward to the next audio adventure. Like I've said in the past, if I could give this podcast six pilgrim hats, I would. Butters. So that's a great. Now, Peter is somebody that really listens to the show. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's too kind. <laughs> he pick, and he picks up on all these, these little like things that we drop in there. And yeah. it's, it's great. It's, it's like little inside jokes we've had for like 25 years. And he's like immediately in on them. It's like, oh, we must have been hanging out with Peter Gardeau in the mid-90s and not realized it. 
Well, that's when you can tell when somebody is uh, a real fan or when they really enjoy the show, because that's how I am with my favorite podcast, most notably Pot of Thunder, mm-hmm. which I could, I could probably write the same letter to them with all the <laughs> Yeah. little things that they've said they probably don't even remember or they go oh yeah he knows that and so it was um it was uh it was it was a fun time it was fun meeting him and it's great to know that it, you know he enjoys this so much yeah i sent i sent nick a message yesterday i was listening to an older episode of pot like a really old episode of pot of thunder from like five years ago and i mentioned something he's like i have no memory of that obviously it was five years ago but it was something about chris was chris was ruthlessly destroying blood sweat and tears so i had to i had to speak up but all right so now we're gonna go one by one through our top five albums starting with the fifth place one now this is our our top this is gonna be combined or we're gonna well we're gonna start with your top five albums based on your rating so in the number five slot these might be these are kind of surprising to me because i hadn't really sorted the spreadsheet but number mm-hmm. five for you is green bullfrog makes sense yeah fantastic yeah, I, album I, and i remember when i got the cd version of it in the the 90s whenever it came out like we were talking about this was one of my go-tos i just thought like i remember thinking like man this is like this is a super group this is like most of mm-hmm. the mark two and you know a couple of other people <laughs> it was just awesome well, not most of Mark II, because as we recall, Roger Glover was not actually on the album, despite what right, Richie Blackmore right. said. But at, the, but at the time, at the time, yep. I was just like, wow, you got you got Richie on there, which was just distinctively him and Ian um, Pace. You know, Ian Pace and like these and you know, the other the other guy, like uh, who Tony Ashton was on it. Oh, yep, yep. Um, and just it was just like just a great album. It was like getting an extra deep purple album from the in rock era, is how yeah. I remember thinking about it so yeah it's like in rock if in rock was just strictly blues like straight yeah. blues is really great stuff your number four slot burn not surprising no surprise no surprise there either it's one of my favorites what, what more to be said your number three slot might surprise you though trapeze medusa hmm in the number it, three slot it does surprise me i mean um yeah i i do love this album um and i don't listen to it as much as i should but um um not that i should you know what i mean is um sometimes your favorite albums or your most favorite albums are ones you don't really listen to that often but you can't deny the the craftsmanship of the songs so yep yeah i i stand by my i stand by my ratings that i didn't know about <laughs> <laughs> which order they were ranked in uh number 2 slot rainbow rising no surprise there. No, I'm surprised it's not number one, actually. But, but uh, yeah, that's top two. Easy. Yep. And you won't be surprised when you see what number one is. Of course, David Coverdale, White Snake. Yeah. Number one ranked album by John. Yeah, I, I would say, yeah, if you told me that, it, if you gave me the... Um, the the info like it's either rainbow rising or white snake it would have been a toss-up i would have guessed rainbow rising to be honest but mm-hmm. um yeah white snake is a great album i it's another one i don't listen to that often but when i do i just i listen to the shit out of it, I love it. <laughs> it is, it's a great it's a great album man and like like i said on the episode i I hadn't listened to it in a really long time. And my mm-hmm. main memory was of it, but it's so funny because my main memory of it was, man, that was a really good album. It's like, why the hell didn't I listen to it? What was I doing? <laughs> it's so weird. Oh, I hadn't listened to it in easily 10 or 15 years before we did that episode. Wow. Like it was so like, and I'm just angry with myself. I'm so dumb. I've listened to it a ton <laughs> since, but so <laughs> stupid. Um, all right. Now my top five in all the right. number five slot. Rainbow Rising. Yay. Of course, no, no surprise there. In the number four slot, the Butterfly Ball. I'm surprised that didn't su- go higher, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not surprised it's in the top five, but surprised it's not number one. Well, and of course, when you look at these rankings, I don't even, I don't have them open right now. The 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 decimal place difference on these is so mm. small. And I, I I'm finding too, you if you have an album like Rising that's got only what six seven six tracks seven tracks 
mm-hmm. six tracks um and they're all super solid that's going to really elevate it in the rankings the album like butterfly ball with 20 tracks if you have a few threes in there it can really bring down the average that is true so that could have something to do with it my number three slot is come taste the band no surprise there either no surprise i'm surprised it wasn't in your top uh yeah you know that's that makes some sense but but i mean you know at least uh coverdale was in there somewhere <laughs> that's all that really matters Co- coverdale and hughes were in my top five so that's all that matters to me yeah. not to give too much away but there's only one album in the top in my top five that doesn't have coverdale on it <laughs> what does that say um the number two slot for me david coverdale white snake I'm actually just like thinking about it. I'm just really still surprised that this ranks so highly for the both of us. It's um, freaking great, man. It's really Oh, it good. is. I remember it like is. after the, like the episode air, uh, airs at like midnight and at like, I don't know, one in the morning, our time, I got a message from Jorg being like, I can't believe how much you guys liked White Snake. <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, that's right. You told me you said that. And I was just like, he was just like he's like surprised he's like i was surprised how much you liked it and i'm of course not saying it's a bad he's not saying it's a bad album he's york he's the ultimate yeah. white snake fan but i think you're just surprised by how much we really dug it i think we were surprised too at how highly we ranked it because each song we we're just like damn i i forgot how good this was <laughs> it's really good yeah uh, and then my top spot my top pick stormbringer there you yep go. yep i can see that yeah, which I, I was kind of surprised by. I, I, would, I did not really see that coming until I did the little data sort there. So that's our top five. And then, of course, cool. we have to see where, what are our rankings for the, uh, for the top combined. So mm. going, going through these really quickly, in the number five slot for our combined scores, you have Burn in the number five spot. Mm-hmm. Come Taste the Band in the number four slot. Yep. Stormbringer in the number three slot. <laughs> there we go. All Mark three and Mark four. Almost going through them in order here. Rainbow Rising in the number two slot. And then mm-hmm. I think you've probably done the math and figured out the number one slot. Boom. David Coverdale, White Snake. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. Wow, Cover- Coverdale takes it. <laughs> takes it all. So, and uh. once again, and he's he's on four of the five top albums that we that we've ranked so far. You know, that, that's, that's really, it's kind of interesting. And I mean, it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody that's a regular listener or to us that as much as we love Mark II, we love Ian, Ian Gill and Roger Glover. Oh, yeah. Um, that not, no Mark II was in any of that. Like, no, you know, no. no Machine Head, even in rock. Um, but I mean, it's, it's no surprise uh, to me because... Mark three and Mark four have always been our favorite lineups, mm-hmm. um, which it's, it's kind of, if you think about it, I feel like it's kind of weird to be like um, that, that kind of a fan because you f- figure like most people uh, like your average, I guess, deep purple fan, you know, would be like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a total Mark two guy, the, the Ian Gillen version. It would be like if somebody was just like, Oh, I like the Mark St. John version of kiss. <laughs> It's my favorite era. Too bad it only lasted that one album. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad it lasted a, a month or whatever. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like, I mean, I know these are like legit lineups, but it's like if you ask an average, you know, uh, somebody that listens to classic rock or music, they're not going to, they're not going to say, um, oh yeah, burn, Stormbringer. They're going to say smoke on the water. Of course. Yeah. Um, so um, I don't know. It's, it's kind of cool. And it's also interesting that we are kind of, um, uh, that just made me see, and especially Coverdale's solo album being mm-hmm. our number one pick that we are, um, I consider us almost like unconventional Deep Purple fans and enthusiasts. Well, I think I said it, and it might have been in that first episode that's had so many listens, is uh, I think I, I think one of, I don't remember exactly how I phrased it, but like, I think mm-hmm. I said something along the lines of Deep Purple isn't necessarily my favorite band but the music that surrounds the band throughout its entire career is amongst my favorite music. Yeah. And that, that kind of goes to show with these rankings is these offshoot projects and these just, there's so many great things between White Snake and Coverdale solo and rainbow, just all of this stuff. There's so much great stuff there. Butterfly ball wizards convention, which we haven't even gotten to yet. 
so much amazing stuff, but not always necessarily tied directly into the band. Yeah. That's kind of the and premise I mean, of the show. Well, it is the premise of the show. That's when we first started talking about it. That's why we wanted to do it. Um, and I think it's even opened my eyes to more music than um, I've listened to before. Like, I think on my way home today, I was listening, I think I was listening to Dawn Explosion. Oh, nice. Um, and, and prior to that, prior to like everything that you told me about, um, um, what's his name? Bobby Caldwell. Yeah. Like, I didn't know he was a, such a great drummer, songwriter, uh, kind of personality, like within those three albums, you know what I mean? It's like to, you know, to hear you. And when we had, uh, had Nick on to talk about him, like in the way that, you know, some people would talk about, um, you know, uh, whatever other famous drummers or musicians or whatever, they get a lot more no notoriety. It's just mm -hmm. like, wow, there's like a whole other story with just this one band. And there's like a ton more that we haven't even touched yet. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So, Captain Beyond's the first band that we've completed the discography for. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, strangely, it's, like, well, <laughs> it's almost like we, this has turned into the Captain Beyond podcast. I, I know. Right. We covered it all <laughs> for, for a while, but yeah, but that's, that's my point though, is like, um, you know, even all these years later, I'm not only reappreciating and reexamining some of the music that was my favorite, but I'm just discovering new music that was, uh, kind of spawned from the people that were involved in this wonderful classic band. All right. Uh, next up, we have got a letter coming in to us from Ryan M, our faithful friend and patron. And Ryan says, um, and our $11 patron at that, Ryan says, Dear Nate and John, I discovered the, this podcast around the time you guys posted the Come Taste the Band episode. And from there, I was hooked. Every Monday, like clockwork, I would tune in and listen about the world of Deep Purple. Thanks to both you guys and this podcast, I've discovered a new love for Deep Purple. These episodes have given me a whole new perspective on Deep Purple and the extended family. Thank you so much and keep it up. We have a long way to go. <laughs> and that's right. You ain't kidding. <laughs> no, no, we, have, we do have a very, a very long way to go. So. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Uh, all right. Let me put Good, I want to keep going. Thanks. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> All right. So our next uh, segment here, we've got, where is it? Oh yeah. So our Apple podcast rankings, we're going to take a quick look at those. Uh, where do I have them? Here we go. So Apple podcast reviews. So right now we're sitting at a comfortable 4.8 out of five ranking. Got a couple of four stars and one three star review because of our audio on an earlier episode so i hope mm -hmm. that uh the name that i can't pronounce uh as a if you do but you boogle, i think <laughs> clearly, clearly just slammed on the keyboard um they said they love the content of the show but the volume levels were kind of off in our early episodes they certainly were he's so not totally, wrong no totally fair um but yeah so we're, we're hovering at 4.8 stars we've got um 28 is that no 36 rankings in Apple Podcasts, so we're looking Very for cool. more. A little little breakdown of how they all all uh, play out there. So we're hoping for more reviews from Apple Podcasts. Please submit a review. And everybody's been very kind so far. So far, no one star reviews or anybody calling us dicks or anything like that. So thank that's you when, very much. That's when we'll know it. we've made it. <laughs> <laughs> we start getting haters. I'm sure we, I'm, I'm sure we do, but I, luckily they've decided to keep it to themselves, which is very appreciative because yeah. I, I don't like, I don't like it. Yeah. Cause I'm sure there could be some, but we've had a few other comments here and there, but not necessarily on the reviews. They're just like, Oh, I can't believe you got this fact wrong. Like, yeah. Well, like we said, we're, we're fans. We're not experts. We're not historians. We, um, you know, and, and of course, sometimes we get it wrong because we are dumb and just don't know the, <laughs> the story. Sometimes you get it wrong is like we misspeak because we're talking for two hours, like a bunch of idiots. Um, yeah. Okay. So next up, we've got our first video testimonial. This one, or, I'm sorry. This one's audio. This one comes to us from Kev Roberts, who is a long time, I believe pretty active on Twitter. If I'm thinking of the same person, uh, mm -hmm. but writes in uh, or sends us this in about the show. Oh, I accidentally uh, expanded your screen. Okay. <laughs> Here he is, Kev Roberts. Hey guys, this is Kevin from South Wales in the UK. 
congratulations on your one year anniversary i've recently discovered your podcasts and uh, i've really been enjoying them i tend to listen to them uh, on my journey to and from work which makes the journey a lot better uh, and more interesting uh, i'm really looking forward to hearing some more congratulations again all right thanks kev cool thank you I appreciate that um screen share oh sorry okay awesome thank you kev um all right we got some other kind of brief little uh what am i going to say here kind of snapshot of where we're where we're standing right now in a lot of our different platforms so right now looking at facebook we've got 101 followers um, this is just kind of a little breakdown of, of the community. So Facebook is pretty tame for as far as all the groups go. We got some mm. guys like Rich Shaler who always uh, comment on Facebook and we pre appreciate all the great support we get. But as far as our social media goes, we don't get a ton of love on Facebook other than yeah. um, you know, Michael Erickson and, and Rich and, and them. Yeah, I've noticed that too is it's very – very limited like you'll you'll get a you'll you'll post the same thing on facebook and somewhere else and facebook will get the least amount of um because i'll see after it's been up for like a day or two and you'll have like three likes or something yeah there's been like 197 likes on twitter and like 72 t retweets and you know 27 comments and then you look at facebook and it's like one person responds <laughs> but i i find that i've noticed with other shows too like some of them are huge on get a huge amount of engagement on facebook and not so much on twitter so yeah it depends i mean is with multiple platforms if you're successful on one of them at least then it's a success so and then we've got a bunch of uh just kind of page views and stuff that i don't understand but this is like the last 28 days so who who cares um on instagram we've got uh 438 followers and some really great people on there uh jonathan headland who we'll hear from later um is probably one of our more, most prolific commenters on on instagram and it's cool because you see these these different people that are that are really engaged on one or one or more of these social networks and you don't see them on other uh, other ones so that's that's the point of putting it on all these different platforms is just uh, just to make sure that uh people get it the way that they want to get it. And if somebody's active on Instagram and they want to know about the show then they're going to get it from here. So um, then our, our biggest one obviously is Twitter. We've got 1,274 followers at the moment. And um, like I said, tons of engagement, 6,045 tweets. That might um, be the reason we have <laughs> so many. Wow. I think that's more than I have with my private Twitter account that I've had for 13 years. <laughs> um, and then we've got YouTube, like which I said again, 136 current subscribers. And, um, uh, and interestingly, it does have our top videos on YouTube. Our top video is Roger Glover, Love Is All documentary on Dutch TV. Um, but our second most highest viewed video on YouTube is um, the new Deep Purple hmm. episode, episode number 37. So um, then we've got a couple of... Yeah videos i filmed from the from the live show i went to go see mm -hmm. our next episode is episode 19 before they were purple about tommy bolin and then our richie blackmore's rainbow episode and then the interview with tony flynn so a lot of uh new deep purple love on youtube i feel like we'd probably get more engagement if we weren't if we weren't banned as much <laughs> <laughs> that would certainly help <laughs> Um, yeah, because uh, some countries were abandoned, some were not. Like, who knows? I don't even know what to make out of any of this, mm. um, uh, any of this information. But it's interesting to look at. And then looking, it's interesting to look at the graph though of the last year on YouTube because you see all these, you know, you see a few big spikes, and then you know it just. But you have seen that if you looked at this on a less jagged scale, you'd see a pretty good linear increase. So we've gotten eight thousand one hundred and fifty views on YouTube, which. You know, when you look at each individual episode, it's not a lot, but yeah, 8,000 views, I'll take it. What's that huge spike in October? I think that's when I went to the Deep Purple show and posted some videos from it. It's oh, the wow. only thing I could think of. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but then a few spikes recently too, though, back in April and stuff. Oh, I think maybe that's when I was posting the, I started posting my quarantine quickie videos. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and some other YouTube garbage here. <laughs> engagement and all that nonsense who cares audience i thought i thought this was funny audience um <laughs> age and gender <laughs> male 100 <laughs> percent 
Yeah, not surprising. Um, but I think I think wow. honestly, <laughs> I think honestly, it has a lot more to do with the fact that most people probably just don't uh, assign a gender in their YouTube profile. Well, their look at that like, age fifty four, forty five to fifty four years. That makes sense as well. Yeah, it's a hundred percent of our views. So yeah. clearly, I think most people just aren't putting in their putting yeah. in their statistics there are just stumbling on it in a, in a random search or whatever but um, it still makes sense i feel yeah totally even if it's not 100 percent accurate um all right so it's kind of uh some some updates on some of our social media channels um and now we've got another written testimonial this time from another uh great uh, connecticut listener mark roback he says i will say that what I like most about the show is that although you guys are huge fans of Deep Purple, you are quite willing to poke fun at all of the absurdity that goes along with the great music. Also, I find it entertaining when you sometimes go off topic, going down some paths that lead you to your father's cold feet, Caldors are chock full of nuts. <laughs> As a few others have said, it really is just like listening to music or watching a musical performance with your friends. I sit there a lot of times thinking what I would love to chime in and contribute to the entertaining commentary. Mark Roback. So that's a great one. <laughs> nice. Well, that is, that is like one of the best things about, and I'm sure you have them too on your favorite podcast when the, whoever's doing it will inevitably go off on tangents and uh, even if they don't have anything to do with the podcast, it's always fun. Yeah. Yeah, it, it totally is. And I, if I hadn't listened to as many podcasts as I do over the years, I'd probably be like, Oh man, we can't do that. We got to cut that off. We got to stay on, on topic, but you know, listening to podcasts for the past, whatever, 15 years or so, I'm just like, mm -hmm. oh, who cares? Anything goes. <laughs> People are looking <laughs> for entertainment on their commute or whatever. Who cares what we talk about? Well, the other thing too, is, is that it's like really, it's, it's entertaining to hear um, when you have uh, two, two or more people talking, and uh, I mean, you could go to any book or website and just get the facts about oh, sure. yeah. a band or something like that. But when we're putting in our opinions about the band, or we go off on a tangent or something, that's just kind of the the natural interaction of the the people or the chemistry that they have. Not just us, but on any any podcast that anybody enjoys. And I mean, that's why, like, a lot of times if we start talking about crazy stuff that our, our dads did or something it's it's relatable to people and plus they you know if it's a funny story hopefully people get a kick out of it and that just makes it enjoyable and then we rein it in and bring it back to whatever the topic is so yeah we, we, we mostly we're not we're not beholden to any advertisers we're doing this for ourselves to have fun and that was always the kind of idea like hey let's get together once a week and talk about deep purple and if mm -hmm. anyone else wants to listen tag along then fine if not eh, what else who cares we're not you know other than pop cats we, we don't answer to any corporate overlords so hopefully <laughs> hopefully the big i could just picture like this table of people at parker brothers like these guys chomping on cigars ah what are the numbers what are those guys on the deep purple podcast bringing in for us this week and then they mm. hear our episode and they're like, ah, cut them off. Tell JLT, no more, no more Deep Purple podcast. Um, okay. So <laughs> very, good. Um, very good. So we've got some great patrons. Uh, we do really want to thank everyone again. It's been great getting to know all of you in particular over the past year. Uh, Steve Seaborg is one of the more quiet and silent uh, supporters of the show who I'd really like to appreciate and uh, hoping to really soon be doing some work with him on getting some sort of merch out there for people who are interested um, now that we've got a great uh, a great logo thanks to our friend Brendan um, okay we've got another video coming up a video testimonial this is going to be this is this is actually a breaking story because I don't think anyone's seen this guy on video before um, other than us when we've had a zoom meeting with him and that's um, that's Rye from Sabbath Bloody Podcast, who was kind enough to record a video for. I didn't think he was going to do a video, but this is great. Um, so this is his video uh, testimonial for the show. Let's see how it goes here. All right. Hey, Nate and John, it's your buddy Rye from Sabbath Bloody Podcast. Happy anniversary to the flagship of the Deep Dive Podcast Network. You're putting myself and the simple man to shame with your absolutely outstanding dedication to the medium. Her full year now, right? So how many years of butterfly ball and space high talk is that? <laughs> All the stuff we live for, the deepest 
of the deep purple content. It does not go unappreciated either. I'd raise a proper pint of doom for you, but we're in the midst of a goddamn pandemic, son, and I'm all out of beers. However, in honor of our favorite lunatic, Sir Ian Gillen, let's have some top shell tequila. <laughs> Straight from the bottle, too, because you know how we do. Solange. Ooh, look at that. Oh. Woo! <laughs> Born again! <laughs> Happy anniversary. Love you guys. Keep it warm. And the best thing is I got that at like 10 in the morning. <laughs> I was like, did you do this last night? He's like, nope. <laughs> uh, we all awesome. deal with the quarantine in our own ways. That's, that was great. Thanks, Rye. Yeah, that was. Thank you. And Rye is someone who was, uh, like I've said before, just a champion with us f from day one. I, I can't even remember how we stumbled upon each other. Or if, if he bumped into us or we bumped into him, but it was right away, right? like our first episode or something and i think it was because mm -hmm. he had been toying with doing a deep purple podcast for a while and maybe he was on the lookout i don't i don't remember but as soon as i find out about his stuff or i might have even started just listening to his show because i was trying to listen to what other band podcasts were out there and really loved his black sabbath content since i'm a huge black sabbath fan um but yeah he's from day one always supported us and talked us up and promoted us so really appreciate him for all that all right, so next up, we got highlights from the last year. Man, it seems like there's almost too many to mention, but uh, any, anything jump out at you right away as to what, what, what a highlight for you has been? Um, <laughs> way to put me on the spot. Yeah, you know, that's um, what I do. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I, th I don't know. I just think that um, I feel like if I just like think about it like really quick, I think like nearing the end of last year when we were getting into the holidays and we were like banking episodes and stuff. And we were, we were talking about doing the first like Christmas episode and the new year's episode and the, the kind of different episodes that we were doing, like the talking about doing the Coverdale tweets episode and stuff after just reviewing albums for so long, I thought it was kind of fun because we were like, I don't know. It was, it was like, Oh, we we're going to do a Christmas episode or a holiday episode, which was like, I'd seen so many other like TV shows, podcasts, what have you. And like, I finally got to be part of one with the, you know, we get to wear crazy hats and have crackling <laughs> yeah. fires in the background and stuff. And so I just remember that as being like kind of a exciting period. Plus I love the holidays too. So um, that, I think that just kind of heightened my, my excitement for it but I, I really enjoy doing those episodes and preparing for them and you know uh, just being part of them so yeah absolutely and I think just um the the people that we've met through this have has just been awesome like people that never would have crossed circle I mean you've you've met more people in person than I have um uh, I, I've met Steve Seaborg at the a show in October and that was just awesome to just go to a show and just be like, Oh, Hey, what's up? Like meeting somebody that actually listens to the show. And that, that was great. Um, I think that's the only person I've met in real life. Uh, but, but, you know, on top of that, just, you know, I remember the, I remember the first time that Glenn Hughes or David Coverdale like liked one of our tweets or something. And I was like, Oh my God, I can't believe it. And now it's like yeah. a daily occurrence, like not only for them <laughs> to like it, but for one of them to, comment or answer a question is just like mm -hmm. wow like yeah i mean talk about guys who really understand their fan base and really like that that's making somebody's day right there when you know i might mention something about one of them you know it's one thing if i tagged them and sometimes i just mention like oh hey i wonder about this and david cover will be like ah oh, that's because this and that or wow he answered my question <laughs> and this was like pre pre-pandemic too when he actually had stuff to do <laughs> although he's been even more responsive now <laughs> yeah now now he'll, he'll like go ping pong back and forth with a few tweets and you're like wow he's yeah he's definitely stuck in the house um but it's it's great to it's great to hear that that stuff, and it would be great to have one or both of them on the show someday. And nobody else is really on social media, so that would be our best bet. Well, um, just a couple of the interviews that we've gotten, and then of course, like uh, meeting uh, people, like you said, that we've never met before, like going to the concert with uh, Peter last October uh, was really cool because it was just like 
hanging out with a friend, uh, immediately you knew that uh, you had something in common, so it wasn't weird. Or the, uh, what is it, a couple of weeks ago when we had the, the what is it, the four-way Zoom chat? Oh, yeah, um, yeah. With like, uh, who was it? It was us. Simple. Um, the Simple Man, Rai. Um... I think it was just four of us. Yeah, right? I guess it was, it was us just... And then... Yeah, yeah, it was just the four of us, right? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, just just even doing that, and it wasn't. It was just kind of like showing up, and you're like, "Oh, hey, you know, we already know each other." Um, so <laughs> yeah, that's, that's just it, yeah, really cool. T- talking to somebody on the, the on Zoom that you have never actually talked to before in your life, but you forget because you talk so much on on Twitter or email or whatever. It's it's pretty cool, and yeah, you hear so. you're you're so used to hearing their voices on their episodes, so you're just like, "Oh yeah, it's Rye. I'm just hanging out with Rye for the first time ever, but it feels like I've hung out with them a hundred times already." And uh, the the other thing with him too is is that like I'm just we're we're two people going back and forth. I mean, for him to have such a really well put together podcast, just one person talking the whole time. Oh and God, he really yeah. <laughs> has like this this voice and this way of speaking um, in the episodes. It's just like it. There's no other way to say it. it just sounds so like professional and put together and everything. It's just like, wow. And he just, it's just him. And you have to be, you have to have something. You have to be really good to pull that off. Oh yeah. Uh, just the, alone. Both, both, both Sabbath Bloody Podcast and Skinner Reconsidered. That's just one guy talking and editing and stuff. And I, I know from the time I guest hosted uh, Skinner Reconsidered by myself, you know, I'm just, you know, I do a two hour episode with us and it's like, ah, no problem. And then I'm trying to do like a 20 minute episode of his and it's taking me three days. So I'm like, I'm like, I keep saying things. I'm like, oh no, that's stupid. I got to go back and edit it. And it didn't sound right. It didn't sound natural. And this is having a conversation is so much easier than just doing that yourself. So kudos to those guys. But um, I, I agree, like kind of expanding the social circle um, and meeting other people that have those same interests uh, from just all over the, all over the globe, really. It's, it's really, it's really cool. And it's a lot of fun. All right, our next testimonial comes to us from our good friend, Nick Jones. Let's take a listen. Oh, hi. This is Nick from the Pot of Thunder podcast. Uh, You caught me playing a riff from the War Horse album. But that's not why I'm here. I'm here because I want to congratulate the gentlemen behind the Deep Purple podcast on their first anniversary. Uh, Nathan and John, two guys who I consider to be good buddies. And uh, thank you for all the excellent work you've done this past year. And I hope that you guys are uh, going to keep going for quite a while with this. And uh, thank you also very much for letting me be the very first guest that you guys had on your podcast. Uh, It was an honor. And uh, best of luck. And I'm going to play some more War Horse. You guys can stick around if you want, but I understand if you uh, got to get going. All right. See you guys. Thanks. <laughs> oh, man. That's oh. so great. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. It's great that he figured out. You know, he wasn't, you know, he didn't like look up the tab. Like he had to figure that out. <laughs> You're not finding War Horse tab anywhere. When he was uh, when he first was playing, I said, "What riff is that?" And then when you said "Warhorse," I was like, "No." <laughs> oh, that's another great, great uh, connection that we've made too. Because now I um like uh will like occasionally will since the episode we've been uh, texting each other back and forth uh, because I found uh, we found out that um, he has a, a family member that has uh, lives here, um, actually oh, very yeah. very yeah. close to me. Um, And um, so, you know, we kind of found out we had that in common, but there was just like some days we were talking about like, oh, I saw this episode or whatever. And then we would just kind of get off on a tangent or talk about some kiss stuff or whatever else. So it's just, um, you know, cracking jokes and everything. So it's really cool. It was really cool to meet him and have him on. And I like uh, excited to uh, hopefully have him on again if we... I don't know if Captain Beyond re- <laughs> <laughs> if they were a reunion. Well, they are yeah. still going. So yeah, yeah, we're out of pr- Captain Beyond though. So looking ahead at the next year, any uh, any goals or any things that you have in, in in mind that you're hoping that we get to? Oh well, I mean, I think I think that's easy. Um, I mean, I hope that we have. I hope we have covered Day Alon as a guest. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> 
that's 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 a big one but that's like that's my ultimate goal anything else that we conceive of is is like i feel like yeah we could do it we could get guest hosts do different type of episodes keep reviewing albums but having on uh coverdale coverdale and hughes i think between the two of them i i'd take either one but coverdale is like the, the holy grail as far as i'm concerned um that and i'm hoping that we like uh like as a as a world um can start traveling again um mm. eventually and when i travel uh i'm hoping that uh some of the places i go i get to meet people that uh listen to the show um just because i, I want to make new friends and i want to uh, just like the, like i said that whole interaction like uh when i when i met uh Peter several months ago was just so cool that it would be great. Like if I was going like, Hey, I'm going here. And you know, we have uh, people that listen to the show out there and like, yeah, we should meet up and blah, blah, blah. You know, it'd be like, that would be really cool too. So that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Great goals. You? I mean, yeah. Hughes or Coverdale would be something else, but there's quite a few other people that are um, in the books and potentials coming up for some, uh, uh, some interviews and some guest hosts. So very excited about, about that and expanding and trying some different things with the show for sure. Um, well, how about you? Me, what? <laughs> Your goals. I mean, that would be my goals. Like to try meeting some, meeting some new people, trying some different formats for the show. Um, Husey, Coverdale, some, you know, some other, uh, some other people I don't want to give too much away, but I've been doing some legwork on. <laughs> Well, you, you yeah. know, <laughs> you know, the people that we talked about. So um, yeah, that'd be, that'd be really awesome just to kind of, yeah, see what the next step is for the show and get to some albums. We can talk about that after our next uh, testimonial, mm -hmm. um, which comes from Anton Glaving says, hello, Deep Purple podcast. Congratulations on your one year anniversary. I am very happy to be a patron of the show. Here are a few examples of what I enjoy about the show. Nate is evidently telling the truth when he describes himself as a natural born archivist. The extent to which he has immersed himself in deep purple literature and the way he digs through the vaults to unearth obscure, fascinating information about the records from days long past is mighty impressive. Ah, thank you so much. Uh, your checks in the mail. John is just about the most sharp, perceptive, and not least of all, wonderfully snarky commentators on rock music that I've ever come across. Very high praise. Although it infuriated me at first, I now really appreciate the fact that you are taking your sweet time before getting to Perfect Strangers. Your extensive coverage of music from the 76 to 84 Interregnum has been of great value to me. For example, by introducing me to amazing records, I was hitherto unfamiliar with such as Tommy Bolin's teaser in Hughes' Play Me Out. I wouldn't mind if you waited another year before finally getting back to covering Purple Records. Excellent. I also nice. find that was really cool. That's great. I also find it really cool that you adhere to a viewpoint that is not just heretical, preferring Mark three to Mark two, but ultra heretical, preferring Mark four to Mark three. <laughs> <laughs> As an orthodox Mark two loyalist, it is healthy for me to get my perceptions challenged. Thanks for the entertainment and rock on, Anton Glaving, and I'm okay with how you pronounce my name. Um, so. I thought that was great because I love the fact that he, you know, even though he doesn't agree with our opinions, he still uh, loves to hear our opinions and, and get challenged on that. And there's yeah. so much out there, which we talk about before where there's so many, if you go to some of these Facebook groups, people that are just completely unable to accept anything other than like up to machine head basically. And that's it, <laughs> you know, mm. and, but yet they could call themselves the purple fan. So it's so great. Like I personally love like listening to an episode of something like I was talking about listening to um, Chris on pot of thunder, to say some really nasty things about blood, sweat and tears, which I, I love the blood, sweat and tears, but I had a blast listening to him trash. them. Yeah. Um, well, I think that's like, yeah. I mean, I think that that's um, um, what am I trying to say? I, I get what you're trying to say because he <laughs> he did the same thing about one of my favorite Vinnie Vincent songs when they had their um, recent episode about Love Kills, which is one of my favorite songs and like my favorite memories of that video. And the day before 
um, or the, the day came out and I, you know, didn't listen to it. I, I texted Nick and I'm like, Oh, I can't wait. And he's like, oh, I'm not sure about that because he knew already that they were going to like basically dump all over it. And I still had a ball listening to them like rip on it. But um, you know, it was their, it was their opinion. And they also did it in the way that they only, only they can. Uh, which was kind of good natured and funny. And I still laughed at it. Uh, mm -hmm. Even though like deep down, I was just like, oh man, I wish yeah. I liked it. <laughs> I know. Um, but I mean, that doesn't take away from the fact that I love it and nobody else has to validate uh, what I enjoy and what I love. And I think that those are some of the best um, fans and people to have engagements with is, is people that can respectfully disagree rather than like you said, those uh, kind of people that, um, yeah, that drive you nuts on the yeah. deep purple groups, which we don't get into it on the show because we don't want to call people out or start arguments or, you know, indulge any of that. But, you know, you will send me like screenshots and stuff just infuriated, like, oh, why do these people have to be like this? And it's just like, eh, you know, and you're going to find it with anything. And it's just like, it sucks. But yeah, well, there's so many people that are say like, this is the best and you're wrong. If you don't think otherwise, it's just like, it's not the best. It's your favorite. And that's fine. Well, like that's ridiculous. If your favorite deep purple is Mark two. Great. If it's Mark five, Mark seven, Mark one, I don't care. Like, great. That's awesome. I'm, I'm happy to talk to you about it. And I think that's great, but they're not the best. Like deep th Mark three, Mark four are not the best. Neither is Mark two. There's no such thing as best. There's just what you really like. And, um, that's kind of the the direction I always come from. And you sometimes will even see on Twitter, people will post like a, a poll. It'll be like, oh, which is the best? What's the best band? Black Sabbath, Deep Purple, or Led Zeppelin? And, and then they'll be like, oh, Led Zeppelin's uh, fallen behind. Everybody go vote for Led Zeppelin. It's like, why does it matter to you? <laughs> this one person's poll. Like, so if, if Led Zeppelin comes in third place or second place, you're not going to like them anymore. Like what, why? I don't understand why people are so invested in having other people have the same opinion as them when it comes to music. It's just, there's no point to it. Oh, I mean, um, I guess to, um, to put it fairly, I think it was, um, what was that poll that I retweeted that Mitch LaFon did recently? He was like, Dio with rainbow or Dio with Sabbath. And I'm like, both. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, that's my choice. No, uh, like I can't pick one over the other. I'm like all Dio. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, and I'm fine with that too. Like, it's like, which do you prefer? That's fine. And, and I don't mind if it's worded that way, but when you're, when there's so many people that are, that are just like, Nope, you're wrong. This is the best album. And you're wrong. If you don't think, think that I just, I don't know. It annoys me. Um, anyway, well, we don't think like that. So it's like, um, anybody that does think like that, um, they can think like that. So speaking <laughs> of which, speaking of albums, uh, we got a question in from the listeners. What is the album you're looking forward to reviewing the most? Hmm. There's so many. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I think we already did like kind of our, our bucket, my bucket list of albums, like the early ones anyways. Like, I mean, we know that all the Mark three and Mark four, we were just like, and of course, butterfly ball was just like, all right, can't wait. Um, I think um, of course, perfect strangers is the, the one that that you're holding off on um <laughs> because then it then it becomes real <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> that we do it um jesus christ superstar is another one mm -hmm. um purple related um i'm i'm kind of looking forward to um to uh born again mm -hmm. sabbath yeah um and um you know maybe maybe getting into some of the 80s do and 80s rainbow Mm, yeah um nothing nothing in particular from from those uh eras but definitely like you know doing some of them um how about you everything you just said sounds great and there's, there's some albums that just like you're just like oh man i can't wait for that one um everything you just said jesus christ superstar which is going to be a multi-parter um another one is wizards convention mm. which is another uh you know in the long lines of say butterfly ball where it's a lot of the same players and uh, it's going to be another multi-parter and I, I i enjoy really diving into the backgrounds behind all those musicians and talking about these albums i've loved for so long so those are some that i'm looking forward to oh of course uh more more white snake too like oh yeah getting to some <clears throat> actual proper white snake yeah just because like uh if for nothing else because 
I mean, I love, I love those albums, but um, just bringing more awareness to that there was this whole history behind White Snake before they, the whole hair metal explosion uh, that everybody associated them with, uh, that just makes me kind of excited to be able to um, hopefully bring that to some people too, and then just be like, like we were, like, whoa, there was, there was early White Snake. Right. And hopefully yeah, some people and maybe some younger folks can learn what we learned 20, 25 years ago and just be like, whoa, you know, we were learning it very late at that point. <laughs> but that being said, like the, the 87 album I'm looking forward to as well, because oh, I, yeah. I do genuinely love that one. So, and um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's all going to be great. White snake's going to mm-hmm. be awesome. All right. So we've got another video testimonial this time coming to us from another patron the patrons are really representing this one is coming to us from none other than mike knowles hey what's up john and nate this is mike knowles of the five dollar no theme boring tier (laughs) and i just wanted to wish you guys a happy anniversary on the show i really enjoy it i watch it every monday uh you guys and pot of thunder every monday yeah (laughs) i watch it on youtube if i can uh sometimes i catch it on apple Podcasts, but um one of my favorite podcasts i really love how into this stuff you guys are and how in depth you go uh, right down to, you know, positioning of the Goodyear blimp at the California <laughs> and all that stuff. But uh, keep rocking. You guys are doing an awesome job. And I hope this is another anniversary a year from now. Peace out. All right. Thanks, Mike. Awesome. Thank that's, you. That's really good. Um... <laughs> yeah, you were making a big deal out of the positioning of the blimp. <laughs> It was <laughs> probably too big a deal. I, lo- I love. Like, oh, there's a blimp. There's a like, blimp. <laughs> you remind. I think of it periodically when I think about patron. I'm like, oh man, three dollar and five dollar tier. They got. They, I need to come up with a name for them because it's they're just boring. The, the boring no name tier. <laughs> the no frills three and five dollar tier. Um, but yeah, go. it's great. And to to anyone that puts us in a in a on a pedestal with pot of thunder is pretty um pretty amazing. Oh, absolutely. Listening to us and pot of thunder, we're not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, speaking of Pot of Thunder, uh, some folks, uh, just a quick list of some really key people to, to, to <clears> thank. <throat> of course, we've got the deep di- our deep dive folks, which we already thanked, Ryan, the simple man at Skinner Reconsidered, but York Planer, once again, can't say enough good things about York for any time uh, in the year or so we've been communicating on Twitter. If I have a question or something I need answered, he will either answer me or he'll get back to me very quickly just with like, oh, well, I looked through my archives and found this clipping from Sounds Magazine in 1972, which backs up the fact that this album was released on this date. And it's just like, wow, just such a wealth of knowledge and so, mm-hmm. so good about it. And with all the mistakes I make, he never calls me an idiot. He'll just be like, oh, by the way, this, I think, uh, this shows that maybe this was the date and not that date. And I'm always like, wow, astonished by how much knowledge and how gracious and, and quick he is to respond to everything. So thank you. Um, Scott Haskin for having us on his show. Another big thanks to Scott. He's, he's been awesome. Uh, big champ, big, huge deep purple fan and a big champion of, uh, of deep purple um, in our show. Uh, the guys at pot of thunder who have, you know, been extremely generous in in, um, in in supporting us over over the year i want to say over the years over the year that we've been (laughs) around and um of uh terry t-bone mathley who's been super supportive every friday giving us shout outs and refollows and and then michael erickson who uh, is you know somebody who's been in this from day one as a as a journalist and he's interviewed i think all the members of deep purple um and is always promoting us every single week on facebook we couldn't uh couldn't appreciate Michael enough. He sent us care packages in the mail. He's just a, a, a great guy. And we really appreciate his support for the show. Absolutely. And then uh, speaking of uh, the deep dive podcast network, we've got another one coming to, to you from, uh, from the simple man at Skinner reconsidered. And uh, here it go. Oh, actually I got to share the screen with you. Here is <laughs> the simple man at Skinner reconsidered. Hello, Nate and John. 
This is your pal from the Skinner Reconsidered podcast, the host that some call the simple man. I am fresh off a spirited round of Uno with my two daughters. <laughs> Don't worry, I, I won. Taught them a lesson. <laughs> but this really isn't about me. It's about you guys and the Deep Purple podcast celebrating its one year anniversary. Couldn't be happier for you guys. I love what you guys have accomplished. If I recall correctly, your podcast started around the same time as mine. I think I started a little bit sooner than you guys, so I had a head start, and you guys very quickly caught up. There are a lot of similarities between the two podcasts. They're both single band deep dive podcasts. One has gone on to great success and popularity, and the other one is called Skin and Reconsidered. <laughs> so I looked this up a minute ago. You probably know this, but for every anniversary, there's a certain gift, a certain material of a gift that you're supposed to give. It might be gold or silver or bronze or, I don't know, wood, something like that. I looked up the one year anniversary and the appropriate material to give is paper. So I purchased a pretty special gift for you guys. It's a pack of notebook paper, 150 pages, I think. That's a lot of <laughs> sheets of paper. It's wide ruled. I hope that's okay, but down here we don't cotton to fancy elitist college ruled paper. <laughs> you don't need no book learning to enjoy paper down here. So I've got a 150 pack of wide ruled notebook paper just waiting for you guys. It's on the front porch. So whenever you get a chance to swing on by, it's there for you. You are welcome. Also thought it might be interesting to look up on the internets, the development of a baby at one year old <laughs> and kind of see how you guys are stacking up. <laughs> so, here we go. One year baby milestones, growth. At month 12, babies should have grown by 50% from their birth. I think you guys have done much better than that, so <laughs> kudos. One year baby milestones, motor skills. Uh, your one year old should be standing alone. That one might be tough for you guys because I know you're very close. <laughs> as far as eating at one year old, it says that at one year you can make the transition from breast milk or formula to cow's milk. We all know how delicious that is. So <laughs> hopefully you guys are into that. It says you can also start enjoying some table foods. And you can now give foods that contain honey. Eggs and nut butters are also acceptable. So that's delicious. Really excited for you guys. <laughs> But seriously, guys, your podcast is great. I was never a Deep Purple guy before, and I might not still be a huge Deep Purple fan, but I have listened to a lot of great music thanks to you guys. And I love the rapport that the two of you have as old friends. I've told you about this before. It's just fun to listen to you guys talk and bounce ideas off one another. And the sheer output is amazing to me. I can't even come close to keeping up with you guys. You have a Big, huge show every single week, no matter what. That's ready for the people to enjoy. But I'll quit rambling. I love you guys. I love what you do. Keep on keeping on. Don't stop believing. <laughs> what one man can do, another man can do. Nate, feel free to cut that out. Don't went nowhere. <laughs> love what you do. Love the show. Thanks for everything. Enjoy your honey and nut butter, and we'll talk to you soon. Oh, I love it. That was great. Yeah, he was like, <laughs> I could listen to him talk all day, and it's yeah. love his delivery. He was just like, oh, I feel free to cut out whatever. I was like, I'm not cutting out a single <laughs> second of that. It's perfect. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. Oh man, love the, love me some simple man. Um, yeah, thank you so much. My that only com my awesome. only complaint about his show is there aren't enough episodes. Um, needs to be I, three a week. I think I'd be happy with. Well, I think uh, to speak what he was saying to the, the output is purely um, your doing because you're the, you're the taskmaster 
of the two of us. If you didn't like whip my ass into shape to get over here every Monday night or to, to do episodes, uh, to bank episodes when uh, we were going on vacation or going to be indisposed, like I probably, um, we probably wouldn't have as many shows if I was in charge of it because I'm a big procrastinator. Um, so well, I, I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit because, um, while I might like write out the schedule or whatever, if I'm like, Hey, listen, we got to be up at six in the morning. Cause we've got to interview someone from the UK <laughs> tomorrow. You're like, I'll be there. And if I'm like, you're going to have to be up till one 30 in the morning recording this episode. You're like, yeah, whatever. I'll like, you're, you're never like, I can only think of one or two times that either of us have just been like, I think there was one time where you're like, I just can't record tonight. And I was like, Oh, thank God. <laughs> because we were both, for some, I think for whatever we're both reason, exhausted we're from both work. exhausted from work or whatever. And um, something, something happened and like both of us were just like wiped out. And, and I remember that too, because you yeah. were just like, Oh, thank you. And I was like thinking, <laughs> Oh, thank you. Cause it's like, Oh, you know what? It, it's true. Because it's like when I, when I commit to something, even though I, just branded myself as a procrastinator it's just like i feel like all right you're like we're not getting like you said uh, any endorsements we're not you know it, it's not a um it's not a a job even though we have patrons uh to be responsible to um it's something that we can easily just be like eh, you know we'll take a week off we're not going to do this or that but i consider it a responsibility and when you say like this is the schedule and we have to do it i'm respectful of your time and uh, the work that you put into it. So that's why I'm always like, yep, that one night we recorded a show till midnight and you're like, all right, you got to be up in five hours to record again. I'm like, all right, I'll do it. Yeah. it's just, um, well, Yeah. We'll do that. We'll record like three days in a row and we'll be like, at the end of it, we'll just be like shells of ourselves. And then, <laughs> but then we won't record for three weeks or whatever. But I think I, yeah. one, one thing, you know, my only experience really going into this was as a listener to podcasts. And one thing as a listener to podcasts, I always really liked is the podcast that, delivered at the same time the same week every single mm -hmm. week and never missed and that like that was like that's all you need to do even if we had to put out like just a really quickie episode just something to just make sure the people that are counting on that mm -hmm. uh, you know because i know as someone who has had a slog and uh, you know going to work and having these long commutes if my favorite podcast skipped a week i'd be like oh no like it throw my whole day off and be like, what am i supposed to do i counted yeah. on it coming out tonight um, and even if they released something kind of crummy, I'd be like, oh, at least I get to listen to them. You know, that's all that I care about. Yeah, I think that's the other thing I was going to speak to is uh, consistency, too. It's, it's like that's the same thing that I like about like, like I look forward to, to every Monday um, for a certain podcast, like Pot of Thunder or every I have a couple that drop like every Thursday or every Saturday and they make <laughs> the week like more fun. You know, you just see that new thing in your inbox and you're like, oh, boy, a new episode of whatever and they're going to discuss this even if it's like there have been a couple it's like well, i'm not really interested in the topic but i can't wait to hear everybody you know talking and chit-chatting they're like good buddies like just kind of sitting there listening to them and um yeah that's um that, that's part of the fun for me too but not to make uh before not to make it sound like it's a uh, um a not enjoyable responsibility but it's like it's also cool because um, we, as we've said before, we haven't physically been in the same room together for <laughs> like 20 years or something like <laughs> Almost that. Almost 20 years. It's insane but, to think about that. But. <laughs> but it's like over the past year when we started talking again, we become such uh, good close friends again that it's like, like, I, like if I saw you in person, I'd just be like, hey, you're shorter than I remembered or something. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and then it would just be like any other day. So it's like, um, it's it's exciting to do that. And just like, and I love just like, especially the, the nights when I've had to work and then like there was one, I remember rushing back and I like turned the computer on. It's like, all right, we're in, I was still in my work clothes and everything. And I couldn't wait to talk about, you know, Rainbow or whatever the, you know, whatever the album was to just sit here and talk for like a couple of hours about music after like working all all day and all night. Yeah. Um, so that's just really makes it enjoyable because it's something that we like to do and it's like an escape, you know? It's very therapeutic for us as well. Mm. Yeah, that's, yeah, to put it in, <laughs> to put it more, see, I'm, I'm the rambler and you just put it in like, well, you have, like it's therapeutic. Like everything you said <laughs> for the past five minutes, one word. I just got lucky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, so next up, we've got our ta our um our all fives section. So this is going to be section where we talk about all the songs that we've ranked as fives. So this is this is a big one right here. So what do we do first? Let's do so if you look at your screen, you'll see. Hmm, what's the best way to do this? You'll see your top five. These are all your top fives. And basically anything that where you're seeing my score coming at a 4.5 or whatever, I didn't rank in a five. Okay. So, so here we go. Let me share this with you. So this is John's top five list. So these are, is this everything that I've given a five to like out of everything? This is everything that you have given a five to, and then you'll see my scores where we match up, but focus okay. on the ones that are just the ones that only you have five. So the ones from uh, okay. here on down. Wow, I really looks like I don't give a lot of fives <laughs> based on the, the number of albums we've done. All right. So are they um I was I was gonna say are they ranked in any particular order, but they're all five. Yeah, exactly. You, you could do them in alphabetical <laughs> order on the fly. Oh. No, all right. So um oh it looks oh, okay. Um so in no no order. No so yeah, it's order. coming right here. I guess they're, oh no, they're not even in episode order, but coming right here on down is all your fives that are unique to you. Okay. All right. So um, in other words, see. I didn't give them a five, just you. All right. So um, let me see. We got you keep on moving from come taste the band. Beautiful. Love is all and homeward from butterfly ball. Of course, both Ronnie songs. Of course. Um, Savannah Woman from Teaser. That was always one of my favorite Tommy Bolin songs. Great one. Um, uh, Lady from White Snake. Mm -hmm. uh, love that song. Sunny Days. That's actually, that's, oof, that's tough. Given the day, like it's either Lady or Sunny Days are two of my favorite Coverdale songs. Um, I just love listening to them when I'm driving. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Stargazer. That's no surprise. It's the one that I yelled five after as soon as the song ended. I'm like, just put me down for a five, damn it. Don't even ask. And now all those um, songs until that point, I had given a 4.5 to. So yeah. it's not like anything wild. Right. And then the two that we were one point off was um, You Fool No One uh, from Burn. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's another one. It's just like never get tired of it. And the Ian Gillen band version of Child in Time, which I at, at times prefer even over the original. Yeah. It's a pretty, wow. Uh, pretty good list of some unique fives there. Yeah. And and again, I'm just really kind of kind of surprised that there's really no uh no classic Mark II in there. Yeah. No, no, nothing nothing that would be that you know like a highway star or a smoke on the water or lazy sort of sort of situation yeah all right now from, yours from mine that are unique to me burn from burn mm -hmm. this time around an ode to g from come mm -hmm. taste the band oh yeah behind the smile from butterfly ball mm -hmm. watch out for the bat from butterfly ball i love both of us had two butterfly balls but they were two completely different ones well if you're if you're watching the youtube you're going to get a spoiler but there's two uh there's two on an album we haven't actually done yet on an episode but we have recorded it <laughs> so that'll be coming up spoiler alert um so i won't i won't mention those but up until this point everything you've given a 4.5 and then the mm -hmm. songs that i've given a five but you've given a four to holy man from stormbringer Getting mm -hmm. Tighter from Come Taste the Band. No Solution from The Butterfly Ball. And Sir Maximus Mouse from The Butterfly Ball. And then the big, big. Oh. <laughs> the big one. <laughs> oh, Mark, man. Mark II 5. My only Mark II 5 ranked song, which is uh, kind of, even to me, feels insane, even though I'm the one who feel, feels this way. But Mary Long, Jeez. who do we think we are? And you gave it a three. <laughs> I remember that. We were... Uh... I remember you felt bad. You were like, oh man, I feel bad giving this a three. <laughs> well, just <laughs> that, that whole episode, I was just like, I know that we respectfully disagree, but I was just like, I was joking around like, man, this is going to come to fisticuffs because it's just like, I can't, I just, 
not that I can't, but it's just, I really don't love anything that much on who do we think we are. And you loved it so much. And I'm like, I don't got to hurt his feelings. No, please. <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, like what you like. It doesn't, it doesn't make me like it any less. But it isn't, it is insane though. Like if we were going to, if we were going to get in like a really immature argument about it, that would probably be the only way that we could settle it. I mean, no way, man. You're wrong. That is the best song ever. Um, okay. So for the songs that we did agree on, these are the, all the songs, there's nine of them that we all, that all, we both <laughs> ranked. All both of us. Yeah. So we've got a, co- a combined 10 score, meaning a five from both of us. Yeah. So here, here we go. Here's okay. the list. So let's see, Soldier of Fortune. Well, that's that's no surprise. Um, Catch the Rainbow, beautiful song. Sitting in a Dream. Oh yeah. Uh, Blind Men. Yeah, that one. That one is like amazing. Blind Men. Uh, <laughs> blind Man. <laughs> um, light, <laughs> blind Men. <laughs> light in the Black. Yep. Um, Seafull, Medusa. Um, yeah, Bullfrog. Excellent track. And then, wow, three then, from California Jam. Then there's three from California Jam, which mistreated you fool no one in space trucking. But so not, those are kind of outliers because they're a live performance and we are obviously caught up in that actual particular live performance. So really only six, oh wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right. That are not, that are just like album cuts. Most of mm-hmm. them down tempo, melancholy kind of song. So what does that say about us? Um, we're both down tempo, melancholy kind of guys. Well, you know, I, I, I was saying something about this on Twitter the other day about mm-hmm. how, uh, there was some song, some of my favorite, like most of my favorite songs tend to be these, like, you know, this time around and catch the rainbow and blind mm-hmm. and all these where I'm like, and I'm, and, and they're all like really sad songs that I, I, I made some comment about. I was like, I, I generally kind of consider myself to be a pretty happy guy. Like I'm not like somebody that's depressed or, or feeling sad generally very often. And the person, I, who, I forgot who it was and I apologize if they're listening, but they had just a very smart comment, which is just basically like, well, you're, you're latching onto the songs that let you uh, plug into a feeling that you don't often feel. And that's why you really like them. And I was just like, oh, wow, that's a really intelligent way of looking at it. So. Maybe that's why I've always gravitated to kind of songs like this. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I think too that, you know, on a, maybe a thinking or intellectual level, like there are certain um, kind of notes, um, melodies, chord patterns or whatever that just kind of strike a note with some people. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, that could be it too. I mean, all those could have that thing in common, like just the the tempo, the mood of the songs. Um I mean, I wouldn't necessarily like think like if I didn't know you and I saw that these were all your favorites, like, oh, you're a, you know, a, a depressing or, or, or like a slow song kind of guy or something like these are all like really just kind of epic compositions, really. A, what is that, um, that part in Spinal Tap where he's like, D minor, it's, it's the saddest chord, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, I remember like when I, I yeah. saw that as like a, as a teenager, I remember seeing that, that part and just being like, not even getting the humor of that part, just being, oh yeah, of course, that's the saddest chord. <laughs> yeah. And I, I mean, I don't know, something about that just kind of always spoke to me that, that kind of, that, and I, I do like D minor. It's a fun chord to write in for, for me, or maybe it's easy. I don't know. why. Anyhow, um, we've got a great written testimonial here from steve seaborg our one of our if not our first ever patron um i'll have to i i I can't i don't know if i have the information at my fingertips to back that up but steve writes um his uh this is his 25 reasons to like the deep purple podcast like wow this is pretty cool so number one a lot of reasons (laughs) deep deep purple are one of my three favorite bands of all time the other two being beatles and black sabbath Two, Ian Gillen is my favorite lead singer. Three, John Lord is my favorite keyboard player. These are good picks. Four, Richie Blackmore is my second favorite guitarist after Tony Iommi. Not bad picks at all. Five, Ian Pace is my second favorite drummer after John Bonham. Six, Tommy Bolin is in my top 10 favorite guitarist of all time. Seven, Machine, Machine Head is in my top 10 albums of all time. Eight, In Rock is my tw- top 20 albums of all time. 
nine come taste the band is in my top 25 albums of all kinds so there you go somebody who's ranking come taste the band uh machine head and in rock kind of in close proximity so there you go 10 i've been fortunate enough to see them live seven times 11 i admire their perseverance few bands can find success with four different lead singers very true 12 john lord owns side two of who do we think we are much like john bonham owns side two of led zeppelin four very true uh john lord killing it on rap bat blue and all that when john, <laughs> it's the second half of the album richie was probably like pretty much just like oh yeah you take the solos i'm um i'm already thinking about my next lineup mm -hmm. <laughs> uh 13 they gave us captain beyond rainbow and white snake 14 martin the wasp birch <laughs> How do you argue with that? 15, Ian Gillen's vocal performance on Child in Time. 16, Tommy Boland's solo on Coming Home. Coming Home, calling out Coming Home. That's great. That is a great solo. It really is. 17, one of the heaviest bands pulls off my favorite acoustic song of all time, Soldier of Fortune. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Just showed up in our as the first song in our uh, top, top songs there. Um, 17, one of the heaviest bands... Oh, I already said that. 18, the underrated lyrical wit of Ian Gillen. <laughs> I, I <laughs> got to agree there. It's great. Um, 19, after a nine-year hiatus, they come back with Perfect Strangers, one of the best reunion albums ever. Very true. It's hard to think of a, a better reunion al album off the top of my head. 20, I still laugh when I think of Gillen singing Smooth Dancer and it going over Blackmore's head. <laughs> I think we talked about it. Yeah, it's the fact yeah. that not only did it go over Blackmore's head, but um, Gillen was so mad that he couldn't tell if Blackmore was intentionally just ignoring it or if he just wasn't paying attention. Um, 21, Roger Glover's skill as a producer. 22, the album cover for Stormbringer. Top album cover there. 23, mm -hmm. 50 years on and they're still in heavy rotation in my house, car, and iPad, iPod. 24, I have not grown tired of Smoke on the Water. Very good. I cannot claim that one, but I'm very happy for you. And then 25, their music gave me a great podcast to listen to. Pretty wow. nice. Thank you, Steve. All good reasons. <laughs> really, yeah, really giving us, those are some good reasons. Is that Charlie Brown? Those are good reasons. It's like, I gave you five reasons. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Those are good reasons. Um, uh, yeah, thanks, Steve. We really appreciate that. Really uh, nice, nice stuff there. Um, yeah, that was really well, well, well thought out. Very well awesome. thought out. Thank you. He's got to figure it out a lot better than me. He's like, this is my top 10 album, my top 20. I'm like, wow, you keep much better records than us. You know, when he said top 25, I'm like, I, I would struggle to come up with five. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know our top five Deep Purple related. Mm. Um, okay, so we've got some quick stats here from our... Uh, just to, just to, before we get into our next testimonial here. So we've got over 51% of people are listening to us on Apple Podcasts, 14% on Spotify, and then the rest are divided up between a handful of different apps. So thank you to all of you for listening. And then uh, devices, iPhone heavy, 52%, got 19% coming into Android, 4% on Windows. Does that mean Windows phone? Do those still exist? I don't know. I feel like Windows, like maybe on their actual computer. Maybe like it just means like or... actual Windows. That could be it. Other is 25%, yeah. which seems like a huge percentage. Like I'd like to know what the other is. Yeah. What, is, what the hell is other? I don't know. Uh, I mean, iOS or not, or like listening on a Mac. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not going to attempt to dive into that one. Mm. Uh, we've got a great video that came in from our, Longtime listener and support an ear, supporter, Ian DeRosier. And I was pronouncing him the uh, poor French way for a while, so I apologize, Ian. <laughs> but this one comes to us from Ian uh, talking about the show. And uh, check this one out. Happy birthday, the Purple Podcast. To you, from me, your favorite $3 tier patron. Coming to you. <laughs> Uh, sorry, that's the Skinner guy. Sorry. <laughs> Coming to you straight from the suburb of Montreal, where we speak French and we drink 
champagne to celebrate. <laughs> All right, guys. Congratulations. 52 weeks old. This is awesome. The podcast is great. Full of information. I love it. And I'll finish this off with a little message to Nate. Mr. Baudry, merci beaucoup. Ta passion pour Deep Purple est comme le coronavirus, extrêmement contagieuse. Merci beaucoup encore. Et j'espère qu'on en aura pour 52 autres semaines. All right, guys. Grazie, John. Merci, Nate. Rock on, guys. Cheers. I love Ian. Nice. <laughs> He's been a great guy to talk to um, on Twitter over the past year, and we've had a lot of great dialogue and um he's a he's a historian and a music and so much music knowledge from him oh my god he's yeah he's uh got some great he does some great videos on his twitter feed of just doing some random pulls from his record collection and talking about them and he's got such a great delivery i, I love it um so his what he said in french there was translated it says mr baudry thank you very much your passion for deep purple is like coronavirus extremely contagious <laughs> Thanks again, and I hope that in the next 52 weeks we will have more. So he sent that over. So, you know, my wife speaks French, so I was listening to it with her while the kids are screaming. <laughs> She's, oh, geez. I was like, I made out some of it, and, and I couldn't. She, she listened to it the, the first, she, but he says, you know, coronavirus, coronavirus. So it was like, what word is that? And then she listened to it a couple times. Then she started laughing when she realized what it was. But of course, you know, when she was living in france 20 years ago coronavirus wasn't a word that came up very much in conversation so mm. um but yeah great stuff thank you ian we really appreciate it yeah i really uh i really like how he um uh, how he shouted you out in french and me in italian yeah grazie there you yeah go. nice multi multilingual yeah. um monsieur de rosier yeah it was pretty awesome <laughs> um so uh some more stats for you on the show in the last year holy moly so we have listeners coming to us from 81 different countries which is pretty great how many other in the world like 190 Something you're like asking that. the wrong guy <laughs> you're asking <laughs> well, the wrong guy we'll have to wait till the delayed olympics come up so i can count it mm. but still representing a hundred percent of our listeners from earth <laughs> That would be great if like there was just like you know like Neptune was on there or something. Yeah, no, nothing showing up yet from Neptune, Jupiter. Look at Saturn. this. Look, are you serious? They actually have the other. Planets yeah, this is our uh, the, the 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 service that hosts our podcast provides this uh, just to, obviously just to be funny, but it's pretty cool. One percent for Mercury. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, but at, when you click on Earth, it obviously breaks it down by the countries, and forty-five percent coming from the United States. Cool. Um, United Kingdom coming in at second with 14%, Sweden at 8%, Australia at 6%, Norway at 2%, and on down the line. And um, Israel rounding up the top 10, which I would not have assumed. Hmm. Uh, when you click on one of these, it'll divide it up by state or province, and you click on the province, it'll divide it up by city. So it's very, it's very interesting to see, because I remember when we first started, I was like, oh, United States, and then I look at it, and it's like, you know, Illinois and Rhode Island. So it's like, oh, John... My mom, the first episode she listened to and probably never listened to again. And then like me and my wife listening to it. But now that when you click on United States, it probably shows like just about every state being represented, which is pretty cool. Well, I'm disappointed not to see my motherland of Italy on there. That's I probably know. down there somewhere. Well, you think you figure a lot of these are ranked by these are highly, you know, Sweden, everyone in Sweden and like speaks English with no accent better than most Americans. <laughs> Same thing with like Norway. All the Scandinavian countries have like unbelievable English representation in their population, which is incredible because our country, mm -hmm. you're, you know, you get people that can passably speak English and that's about it. 
Um, but it's really cool. And I know Ireland was up really high at the beginning because Rye was living in Ireland at the time. <laughs> Although there was a lot of different places in Ireland that were represented. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but now it's fallen down since he moved to Canada and Canada's moved up the ranks. So thank you to all of you. Um, then we've got uh, uh, <clears throat> next up from Frank Teelgard Mortensen, one of our fantastic listeners and patrons. Hi guys, I decided I didn't have the time to sit down and write something because of homeschooling in the strange world we live in. But when I got up this morning and went through my purple related vinyls to pick something for breakfast, my eyes fell on the Free Fall album by Dixie Dregs. My first thought was, I gotta hear this album now. And the next thought was, I wonder what jo uh, Nate and John would say about this album. I put it on and decided that John would comment on the violin f and fiddle playing. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the beauty of this podcast. It feels like I know you and we share the same passion for purple and related. I discovered the podcast by mistake when I was searching the web for more info on one of my favorite albums. Who do we think we are? Then I saw that two guys had spent many hours making an interesting, funny, and great podcast. When I realized it was a two-part episode, I was sold. The joy of going back and hearing the past episodes made me rediscover many of the great vinyls in my collection. I listen to a lot of music every day, but this past six months is mostly purple related. I like the show's format. I have a 20 minute drive to work. And when I start the car and put on a new episode, it sometimes means that by the time I get to work, you guys are only just beginning to start talking about the album. <laughs> the first part of the episodes with random talks, thought and laughs about the Coverdale tweets is what makes this a warm personal podcast with lots of knowledge being passed on. Ever since the episode where you talked about your dad's cold feet, that is my first thought when my kids say they're freezing. <laughs> Love the show. It gets five stars, 1,000 pilgrim hats, 25 wasted sunsets, or even 15 lines of Coke. It's all good. It's the best podcast out there. I can't wait for new episodes. And when we get to hear your thoughts on Perfect Strangers, Slaves and Masters, and even Gillen's Toolbox album, I personally look forward to some more White Snake what was Hughes's involvement in the recording of Slip of the Tongue album, etc. Also a big bloody thank you for introducing me to Sabbath Bloody Podcast. Congratulations on the anniversary. That was really cool. The you know what really struck me though is is like how many people have commented on our like dad's cold feet reference. <laughs> like that's just taken on a life of its own. I feel like it was you meant like you it's been mentioned like a, like a half a dozen times in this episode. Yeah, and and when we did it, Rich on Facebook made that like <laughs> he made like that album cover. It's, it was like two feet sticking out of some blankets. They were all like blue, and there was like a water bo <laughs> water bottle on them. And that probably helped. That I probably know it was, it was great, and um, yeah, mm -hmm. it's honestly I don't think either of us would even remember that conversation if it wasn't like we were being reminding of it, reminded of it daily. <laughs> Oh. Um, okay, so we get another one here from Leaky Mausoleum himself, him or herself. Ooh, the mystery. Um, <laughs> thank you guys for all your hard work and the amazing information you provide in your deep dive into all these projects from and related to the greatest band in the world. As soon as the episode is over, I already can't wait for the next week. Congratulations on hitting the one year mark. This is only the beginning. Leaky. <laughs> I guess we can just call them leaky now. We don't, we're on a first name <laughs> basics, not Mr. or Mrs. Mausoleum. <laughs> hey, you're good buddy, leaky. You're good buddy, leaky. Leaks. Can I call you leaks? Um, uh, a Q&A uh, co comes in from, a, another Q&A comes in from a listener uh, before we kind of, we've only got very little left here to wrap it up. Q&A, if you could do a band podcast about any other band, what would it be? guess that's that's easy for me no surprise there <laughs> you wouldn't even have to do any research you just have it all up here you just yeah. start, ri start riffing yeah then i'd be the nate of the podcast and you'd be the john <laughs> i would definitely be i would be a little <laughs> less than john i have less than i'd know all the stuff i'd be like i've got <laughs> another 200 episodes of pot of thunder to get caught up on every episode on every uh, song so well my my only my only hesitation is is that uh kiss fans uh we're very rabid in our devotion so i know that i would i would be constantly afraid of getting something wrong for like being for fear of being like you know 
trampled over and ripped to shreds. <laughs> Is it like the Star Trek, con- Star Trek convention? Actually, in episode 23, <laughs> Captain Kirk was, <laughs> there was a continuity error. <laughs> exactly. That's, uh, that's, that's uh, kind of our downfall <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I've, we're very, uh, yeah, very stickler around, for facts. <laughs> I've toyed around with a few. Um, I mean, there's so many Beatles podcasts out there, so I, I don't know mm-hmm. that I would go that route. Um, I've talked to a couple of people about potentially doing a Frank Zappa podcast because I think that would be really interesting. I love wow. Frank Zappa, and I've only <laughs> I only have like 25 of his albums, which is like <laughs> sounds funny, but <laughs> there's so many more. <laughs> um, really, wow. Uh, and I-, I thought it would be kind of cool to do kind of a random, like just random pull from. I think I calculate he's got like a thousand songs, so to just like pull like a random song and be like, I- there'd be probably a. Uh, I probably you know, 25 albums. I probably have maybe a quarter of his, well, not a quarter, maybe a third of his albums, his proper albums. So um, it, pulling a song at random, there'd be like a huge percentage chance that I never heard it before. I don't aren't familiar with it. And, but there's some mm-hmm. that I love so much. So that'd be interesting. And the other one, you know, I was thinking about the other day would be weird Al. <laughs> oh, wait, are there any weird Al podcasts? I don't think so. I don't know. But like, I, like weird al was probably one of my like first things of music that i ever got into and my and i'm really starting to get more into it because my son is really getting into weird al and he just asked me to put all of the weird al albums on his uh all the queen albums and all the weird al albums oddly so he's been listening to tons of queen and weird al on the on the quarantine and you got an interesting kid there nate (laughs) yeah that's for sure (laughs) And he's he's been asking me lots of questions and stuff too, and I just every so often I'll hear so like another a, a Weird Al deep cut, and I'll be like, oh man, this song's so he's so good, he's so he's such a good musician, and I know a lot of people starting off just kind of think, oh well, he just gets the karaoke track and plays over it. It's like no, he records it from the ground up every single song, but it sound like his production is absolutely incredible, and then of course the lyrics he comes up with and everything, and you know since uh, since I was a young kid, I've always uh, got his album as soon as it comes out and i've always been a huge fan so oh yeah i was a huge huge weird owl fan when i was a kid too um i uh, i mean you know we i think when we were I, I know when you were younger you probably didn't understand the depth of right. like uh musical now you just knew that he had these kind of funny versions of the songs that were popular at the time like um um, but I remember the the one, which one was your like favorite one or the first one that you remember playing all the time? Cause I know what mine was. Um, well, the first one I got like that, I, I had dubbed a few from my friends, like dare to be stupid, yeah, and, which was probably like one of my earlier, earliest ones. And then the first one I went and bought at, at Zare. <laughs> all right, Peter Gardo. <laughs> I know you're going to be listening Just to this. another one right up. There yeah. we go. Zare was a <laughs> New England uh, store and I went there yeah. and I got um uh, uh no, even worse. <laughs> yep. So I got yep. that album and, and I listened to the hell out of that album. Wow. Yeah, I got um my first one was uh I think it was called Polka Party. Oh yes, that was one of his early ones. And it was yeah. the one he was just like in front of a door with like an accordion, like <laughs> and he's wearing like leader hosen. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> and I think that that's might have the been one the I one I love had, Rocky Road on it, right? I love Rocky Road. I think it had like a surgeon. Oh yeah, yeah. So good. <laughs> but then I remember around um was it I think it was eighty eight or eighty nine when um when Fat came out. Yeah. That was uh, I was that the the album was fat. No, it was even worse. Remember? Oh, even worse. Bad, was... even worse. <laughs> yeah, it was the same cover. Right, it just right. Said even that had worse fat on it. on it. Right, and he yeah. was like looked like MJ. Yeah. So and I remember lasagna, that lasagna and all that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stuck in a closet with Vanna White. See, now, now I gotta go back and listen to all that. Would be that would be kind of a great like um uh, like a uh, spinoff episode if we ever did that. <laughs> It's like a, a Weird Al episode. That oh would actually be really fun. And he's a genius. And a th- another thing I didn't realize as a kid is there's so many. He does a lot of originals, and the originals yeah. are usually in the style of another artist, which yeah. I didn't I didn't realize as a kid. Um, but at, when I grew, when I got a little older, I was like, and he does one actually that's in the style of Frank Zappa. That is absolutely mind blowing on one of his more recent albums. It's called Genius in France. It's like 12 minutes long and has all the crazy musical things that Zappa would throw into a song. It's just 
it's that's probably one of the most technically amazing things that he's ever done. But then he's done other things like he does uh he does a song about Charles Nelson Riley in the style of the White Stripes. Yeah. It sounds just like a White Stripe song. It's like he's so good at at capturing the essence of a specific band, never mind uh, his his parodies which he's more known for, but well, not even that, but just like um, capturing like a style. Like you mentioned Dare to be Stupid, which I knew from the, uh, was the Transformers, the movie soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, it's just on, inexplicably, it's on that soundtrack because Scotty Brothers was the label he was on and they right. did the soundtrack. So like, I was like, ah, just throw a Weird Al song on that soundtrack. <laughs> Makes no sense. But I remember like maybe several years ago making that song part of my like 80s retro playlist on my iPod or whatever. Oh, yeah. Just because like it was the, the style of the song was supposed to be like a, like an 80s, uh, uh, I, I'm, and I'm not sure, like a Devo, it was Devo type yeah. of song or something like that. And it was like, it wasn't him doing like that band or doing a parody. He did like an original in the style of, and it was like, and I like sincerely enjoyed it and thought like the the production the keyboard parts like it was were just like really or the synth or whatever he was doing was like really good you know or like not him but maybe his band or like just you know and i'm sure he's got a lot of other songs like that i remember he did like the polka medleys medleys and everything like that and like uh the the accordion solos and stuff i remember like being really impressed by that stuff or just, oh, the, yeah like, he's you know, actually an outstanding accordion player but the thing about dare to be stupid is it's supposed to be like devo Mm-hmm. And there's on on the Weird Al behind the music, I think it is. There is an yeah. interview with Mark Mothersbaugh, or I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right. Um, but he basically says, like, when the the song "Dare to Be Stupid" came out, he mm-hmm. heard it and he was like, for years I'd been in Devo trying to capture this 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 essence, this song of what what I wanted Devo to be and what the ultimate Devo was. And then Weird Al comes out with this album and he's got this song on it. And he's like, and he did it better than I ever did it. And it sounded exactly like what I had hoped I could ever get Devo to be. And he's like, wow. and I never forgave him for it. <laughs> <'Cause> it, was, <laughs> it was like, I was so mad that he nailed it so well. And he was just doing it as an offhanded joke. Um, wow. I'm paraphrasing, of course, but uh, I always think about that, just about how, how much, how great he was at, at capturing that style. Wow. <laughs> anyway that's some some ideas from us so um look for those that was a long <laughs> long tangent on weird al <laughs> oh i love weird al though um okay so we got another uh another audio is this one audio yes it's audio testimonial coming to to us from our most prolific instagram uh poster and that is mr uh jonathan Hedlin here oops am i sharing the right screen here what have I done? Okay, this one's coming to us from Jonathan Hedlund, Instagram. Hey guys, this is a long-term listener, Jonathan, coming at you from Stockholm, Sweden. It's a sunny afternoon in semi-quarantine. I was on around about who do we think we are, I think around that time, last summer, so I think long-term would suffice, right? I'm just uh, recording a quick message to um, celebrate your first year, and I thought I would list my... Uh, let's say top six favorite DPP moments. All right, coming in at number six is uh, just simply rocking along to uh, good favorites of mine, uh, being dealt the rightful praise from you guys. That would be, uh, for example, Rainbow Rising or the first Captain Beyond album. You know, it's always good to appreciate it again and again and again. (laughs) All right, uh, coming in at number five, learning to appreciate Glenn Hughes' over-the-top vocal style. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's a challenge at first, I would say, but uh, as you listen along to more and more, you know, with the trapeze stuff and uh, every line he did in the purple, no, not that kind of line. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, he's cool. Glenn Hughes is cool. Coming in at number four, discovering Tommy Bolin. I didn't think I had heard him before, but I actually had heard him on uh, the um, Spectrum album. You know, he's awesome. And we're up at number three, which would be suffering along through the painfully boring and pale debut album by Warhorse. That was a terrible (laughs) album. It was fun to have it, you know, plucked apart. Number two. Number two would be the reenactment of uh, the butterfly ball that was playing alongside uh, the concert video 
uh, you know, when with uh, everything from uh, escapees from an insane asylum <laughs> dressed up as animals to uh, the old blind mole just being the, you know, the biggest asshole in town. And yeah, <laughs> it was a good moment. And number one, what is number one? Number one would be discovering the first white snake LP. I'm yes. really into um, Southern rock and uh, yeah, I just love that sound. And I didn't know that uh, Coverdale had been up to really much anything under the white snake flag before, let's say, uh, here I go again. That was cool. And that was my top six DPP moments. Uh, what can I add? I'm just going to say cheers, guys. Uh, great year. Looking forward to another great year. Over and out. Awesome. Thanks, that was Jonathan. really cool. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Um, See that that makes it worth it too. Like we, like help turn somebody on to early Coverdale. I know that. I mean, just like hearing that over over the past year, like Butterfly Ball, Coverdale, Tommy Ball. Like, oh my God, I introduced somebody to Tom, Tommy Ball, and that's awesome. But uh, I got I got one fresh off the presses here. A text from my wife. It's, she says, "Deep Purple Podcast is worth putting our daughter to bed, even though she might never fall asleep again." So. Um, <laughs> so we're getting praise she even even though it means she has to put my daughter to bed um, and more so usually i put my daughter to bed before we record but tonight mm -hmm. she had promised her because it's my it's her birthday tomorrow that she would put her to bed so mm -hmm. she kind of she painted herself into a corner with that one <laughs> <laughs> and i and i'm reaping all the benefits um, oh i know the tales of how difficult bedtime can be so oh my god um, enjoy the night off my friend <laughs> and then uh we do have a a, a final video um, and this one comes to us. We know we've already heard from him, but uh, he was kind enough to create a little montage of his favorite <laughs> memories from the year. And that's Peter Gardo. And it, this is, unfortunately, this is going to be very visual, but it's only a, it's a brief video. Um, but here it is. Peter Gardo's one year anniversary video for the Deep Purple podcast. These are some of the last album, a song called Storm River! Stay a concert ticket. Shot of John and Peter at the show. <laughs> picture of Charles Bronson, which you guys said Don Airy looked like. <laughs> I have to turn the volume down so we can comment on this. Some shots from the show that you guys attended. Tommy Bolin's teaser and the Difficult to Cure album. The drummer, the business card of the drummer for Rainbow, which Peter happened to just bump into. Right, yeah. <laughs> Randomly. <laughs> Some Senka, some Senka coffee with a <laughs> Caldor country oh. bag. Great Coverdale microphone crotch shot. Oh, his Rainbow Rising t-shirt. That's, That's nice an t -shirt. awesome shirt. <laughs> this is Gene Simmons Destroyer model kit. <laughs> his Battle Rage is on t-shirt. I had that t-shirt. Really? Yeah, I remember, yeah. This Crazy Horses album cover by the Osmonds that he ripped for me. Shock full of nuts coffee. <laughs> Peter, Peter supporting his John Lord look with the sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I drive a Chevy too. Because <laughs> we were talking about Chevys. His, his meme of Richie saying, <laughs> space butters. That's, that's a deep one right there. A <laughs> deep cut. Oh, that was great, Peter. Oh, I, Actually, I, the second picture that he um, he had in the montage, I've never seen that one before. The one of us having a beer, I think I took it, but the other one I think he might have taken oh. at the show. So that's the first time I've seen that one. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, man. What a year it's been. Yes, indeed. And to close it, we're running real long, but do you want to close it out with the Projo thing? <laughs> 
Yeah. Let's, all right. Yeah, so, let's do it. Come on. Yeah. yeah, we're running long, guys. But uh, so Peter did allude to this in his in his great video montage. But we had this this article that appeared in the Providence Journal, which is the which was the big paper where we grew up. Um, I guess I don't know anybody that got the Boston Globe, but Providence Journal was something our parents all got. So this was the cover, and it's like this really weird graphic of somebody saying a bunch of words and it says for real dough this is fab talk and the person saying on my tip fake the funk fat and all these different things so this this would have been in like some like 1996 1997 issue of the providence journal um and we just thought it was hilarious <laughs> and the big page here is this is basically a glossary of what the cool kids are saying which um, no, nobody said. <laughs> which well, some of it people said, but a, a lot, some of it we'd never heard. So it's an yeah. alphabetical order. I don't know if we're going to cover every every single thing, but it's funny. Like it says I, you know, when somebody says it's all right, but I, it's I. Um, this was written. This is written compiled by Christy uh, Dior. Uh, it's kind of Dior. It's really good. Diarajo, gla a glare on that. Yeah, Diarajo, D E A R A U J O, I believe. Right. So this is from yours, right? The, you you like clipped this and you kept it. I clipped it because yeah, we were just. I don't remember why we were even reading this, or it just kind of struck us as funny. Well, you thought it was really funny, and like, to, and we've talked about this, or you know, um, made reference to this before. Now, in your, but I don't know if we made reference to in your in your room in your loft at your house, you had had just like everywhere, just tons of like pictures and posters and like, but that wasn't just a bands. Like it went to like, even like pictures that like that, that you or Paul drew or that we drew or like uh, things that like, you know, in articles like this, like stuff from the paper or things that we found funny or amusing. And was this one of the things that you would put up on your wall? Do you yes. remember? Yep. Yeah, that's that's what I figured. I and I kind of remember that because I remember the the cover of it with the person, you know, uh the that you just showed with all the phrases coming out. So, so but yeah. uh anyways, um yeah, I like um what are what are some of the ones that you remember us um like being like trying to trying to trying to make a thing because it wasn't a thing. Well, I think all all up to interfere in someone's business or bother them. <laughs> Example why are you all up in my face? Uh, you, um, you're all up in my Kool-Aid without knowing the flavor. That was, mm. that was one that came. I can't remember if that was an actual thing or if we just talked about it so much. You know which one I remember that I saw in there? If you, um, can you go down a little bit to, um, was it on, on my tip? Yes. Uh, oh, there was an on, oh, my, on my tip, right? Which was yeah. to be on the same wavelength with someone. Example, you yo you on my tip i was just thinking that yep. and i remember there was one time and i don't know if it was you or if it was e-rock and i was just like we were thinking the same thing and i was just like yeah that's right nate you on my tip and you're like don't don't ever say that because <laughs> it just sounded really dirty <laughs> you'd be like we don't i don't want people hearing you just be quiet. <laughs> well, my but there's some here that, that there's some here that didn't. I never that I didn't even remember. Eagle noun money. See also loot. Example. I just got my weekly eagle from work. I've <laughs> never heard ever, that. Nobody ever said that. I've never heard that in my life. Yeah, I don't even remember us like reading that back then. Well, then Peter's favorite butters. Yep. Uh, but it but is adjective good great example. That concert was butters. <laughs> Which that's what we said after the purple concert. You go, yeah. Did you think that was butters? Yeah, that concert was butters. <laughs> oh, um, there was man. the other one. I remember we used uh, flossing to to leave oh, or make one's way out. Yeah, was also flossin'. bouncing. Um, yeah. Yo, yo, I'm, I'm flossing. Flossin'. <laughs> I gotta get home. I remember E Rock like that one. You just that be good. like. Yeah, I'm gonna get going, John. I'm I'm flossing. You know? <laughs> I like fake the funk to portray yourself as a cool person when you're really not. Example: Margot be faking the funk, trying to say she all that. Margot, <laughs> that bitch. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, there's so many good ones though in this whole glossary. And I'll, I will put this in the show notes, even though it has nothing to do with Deep Purple, so you guys can enjoy it. Uh, uh, <laughs> dumb, dumb monster. <laughs> Another name for AIDS. Oh. Freddie Mercury died of the monster. The monster. <laughs> Who the fuck says that? Yeah, that's another one where it's just like I heard, I read it oh in this God. and I've never heard anybody say it. Donna Donna Karen describes a girl who looks cute. See also <laughs> see also fat P H A T. That girl's Donna, a Donna Karen. Check Donna check Karen. Her what does that even mean? And it's not spelled Karen like the name. It's spelled K-A-R-A-N. What? Like, like some of the things are like, but then you have like right after that, don't let your mouth write a check your butt can't cash. I mean, that's like a phrase like, yeah. from like, you know, our, our dad's era. You know? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> or like a, like grill, right? Someone's business or situation. Get out of my grill. <laughs> I can handle my own. I can handle my own business. See, get out of my grill. Um, uh, a player, and then they have player, and then player hater. I remember so, we were on that one, player hater. I think that might have been where I learned player hater. Someone who is two faced in front of a player <laughs> looks down on a player's activities, but does the same. Example: He's a player hater because he was with a girl every other night. <laughs> Props. I can't remember how many of these we actually learned from this. So I think there are some gen- genuine ones we learn here, but some that. Either I don't know if they're made up or they never caught on or what, but I mean, you know, also, um, I mean, um, enough enough people listening to this, maybe you see this or hear some of these, but maybe they were like regional to certain places, like you know what I mean, like you know how um um what's like a like a West Coast saying is like people say like um they say like hella. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you know, like, oh, she's hella cute and stuff. Like, we don't say that around here um, on the East Coast. But, may, you know, you know what I mean? So, yeah, or as much, so maybe that's maybe like back then it was like it was just kind of regional or may, I don't know. Maybe this psych, maybe the psychopath that brought up this article just made it up. I don't know. <laughs> I wonder what what uh, what's her name? I wonder what Christy Diarrojo is up to these days. Vacation noun, a time of imprisonment. Example, Marion Shook Knights put on vacation for nine years. <laughs> his whole name, like Marion Shug, in case you don't, that's his nickname, you know. I, I just love Margot <laughs> of all the names to pick. But, you know, they, Margo. Uh, minute, uh, is that minute or minute? A uh, minute. An hour or oh, example. Yeah, a minute. That term paper took me three minutes to finish. See that? That's when I've heard like, oh, I, I, it's been a minute since I've seen you. Yeah, I've I've heard that recently. Like, uh, you but know, this is a like, different e- example though. Yeah, but it's like if you said like, yeah, I haven't listened to Perfect Strangers in a minute. You know, that yeah, would exactly. that would imply like, you know, you'd say like, oh, okay, so he means like, you know, years probably or right. But um, yeah, the way that it's here, it almost sounds like you didn't use it in a weird way at all. Like it took me three minutes to finish. That's kind of stupid. <laughs> like 30 cents shy of a quarter to be flat broke. Use also on the nut. <laughs> what? Example, man, being a college student means being 30 cents shy of a quarter every week. But they never so, what's on the nut. Well, being a college student means being on the nut <laughs> every week. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I guess it depends on what like fraternity you're in. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of what kind of initiation do I got going on over there? Whack. 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 Adjective. Not good. Horrible. Nasty. Use also booty, trife, or trifling. Example. That whack car <laughs> don't get us anywhere. <laughs> booty. I've never that booty car don't get us anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that booty car. You can't, that doesn't make any sense, but it's funny, that booty car. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. So there's a million of them in here. It's all on one page, but you can enjoy it. You can check this out at deeppurplepodcast.com for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> for some the, reason. The only known archive of this, uh, this, this article that was 20-something years old. Because it's funny. It's part of our shared history. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, and we've we've somehow brought it up on a lot of episodes of the show. 
Uh, what are, what are what are two things that you guys like? Deep Purple and that article with those weird phrases in it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna look look up Christy and see. I think I might I might have just found her on. Um, I think I just found her on LinkedIn. <laughs> that Send her as a. <laughs> Sabrina is a guest, yeah, a guest host. <laughs> like, let's go this this article like point by point here, and it should be like, yeah, there's this is like, her. I, I don't know. I what found her on LinkedIn, reporting intern, Providence Journal, June nineteen ninety five through January of two thousand. That's her. Where is she now? She looks young. She looks too young to have written that in nineteen ninety six or whatever. Hmm. That's great. Well, you know, it's like anything else you probably was they probably threw this thing at her hey uh christy we got a we we got a, we got a thing for you just just report this story will you just find out what the kids are saying and write a write a little glossary for us for us older see? folks see <laughs> and, as i imagine like apparently a J, this happened back in 1945 yeah like a j jonah jameson type guy sending her out to, to report she's like oh fine she, she's probably like oh you know i'm gonna fuck with these people and just like, <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna throw in a few that i just made up and she doesn't know that years later we're still saying them. She's like, "Oh my God, butters! I made that up." But I don't think anyone would. <laughs> well, th th two people on the East Coast and one person in Chicago say that now. <laughs> <laughs> it's really catching on. <laughs> really, it took a really long time, but boy, oh my God, oh. that's too funny. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna, you know what? I've reached out to so many random Deep Purple people. I might just drop a line to Christy and <laughs> do, do see it. What she's doing do it oh all right folks we, i think we, we should keep this in our lives we're going real long this is like our longest episode for some reason but thank you to everybody for listening over the past year and if you made it through this episode for god's sakes thank you um and uh it's been a blast and we're looking forward to coming at you with tons more deep purple stuff as we uh yeah as we get into it should should we have uh should we have david coverdale play us out yeah i think so um this is um as everybody probably knows by now that follows us and Deep Purple and Coverdale, Coverdale has been doing these awesome acoustic renditions of uh, some of his old songs on Twitter and um, nothing short of amazing. We thought this would be a cool way to close out the anniversary show. All right, then. Well, I'll talk to you next week and we'll have David Coverdale play us out. Okay. Sad to say It's time to go Until we meet again Along the road Remember this On your journey home When you hear the thunder roll You're not alone safe and well darlings all right i'll talk to you next week all right take care thank you for listening to the deep purple podcast if you like what you hear and would like more episodes in the future please donate on patreon to support the show you can also give us a rating on iTunes to help new people discover the show. You can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook for show updates. See deeppurplepodcast.com for more details. Thank you for listening. <laughs>